Holy crap, that ended like at the exact perfect time, but my stream deck button didn't work. Unfortunately, that was dope. Hello, everyone. Base of here, welcome to the quarantine. We're back. We have four new players. Um, this is going to be group two. We're starting them out. This is essentially their session zero. I'm excited to just get back into this. Endeavors. I thought I had... Thanks for the host, Nat. I thought I had uh, those muted. Apparently not. Let me... Tales of our endeavors and more. proliferate. You beautiful beans. Thank you guys so much for hosting. Um, Discord and stuff is quiet right now because I'm talking to you guys. But we're going to be playing some more quarantine. This is their session zero. Uh, we went over the basic gameplay and what we're expecting. I'm excited to start playing. Uh, these are wonderful beans. Uh, they're all streamers. Be sure to go check them out. Give them some love. Um, their information will be rotating as well. And you'll see them uh, on the screen in the setup. But I should stop talking. Let's go say hi to our friends. Yoink. Hi, friends. Cookie time. I hear cookie times. All right. Hopefully you guys aren't muted, right? I mean, no, I'm not okay. muted at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here. I'm like, uh oh, I broke something. But look at look at all these lovely beans. These are our friends. There's all their information. These are the characters and stuff they're going to be playing. You'll see their names. Um, Let's see. Uh, I'm always awkward on how to actually start getting into one of these games. So, uh, I don't know. If you guys want to introduce yourselves, I suppose you can introduce yourselves. You guys want to do that? I'm going to start with Nat, since you're right here. Sure. Am I introducing my character? Um, what I'm doing? Or just sure. Me? Yeah. Uh, quick blurb about yourself, I guess, if you want. And uh, okay. a blurb about your character. Um... I'm not. Uh, I play a lot of Blizzard games, Overwatch, World of Warcraft, or my babies can tell all the <laughs> Overwatch stuff. Um, and I am playing Vasha, the Wood Elf cleric. Uh, she's uh, kind of had a rough uh, childhood, so she went off and did her own thing in the wilderness for a while and and now she's uh learning how to be a good little good little cleric <laughs> helping out other people yeah nice. helping out the animals helping out the people nice all right go for it josh um i'm josh um Outside of here, I play a lot of Dead by Daylight because I'm a toxic human being. Um, and I'll be playing, for short, Sulphur, the Earth Ganassi Forge Cleric, who is trying to say that not all Dao and people from the Earth Plane are evil. That's probably a good idea. <laughs> Challenge them expectations and norms. All right, go for it, Sloth. Uh, hello, I'm Sloth Uh I play a lot of RPGs and uh, Phasma with friends, because I love ghosts. And I'll be playing uh, Zozo, the mute halfling bard. She uh, she doesn't have much to say, but I feel like she's got a lot of personality to share. I love that. Not, not much to say, but a lot of personality. That's adorable. Hmm. All right, last but not least, Moira. Yeah, you guys are sweet. Um, hi, guys. I'm Moira or Lee. Um, also, I'm a streamer, uh, like these wonderful people here with me. Um, and I have a day job. Uh, I will be playing my half-elf druid, Eva, whom I love dearly, and she's a little disaster. So I hope you guys love her as much as I do. But I'm super stoked to be here and want to thank Vasive for including me. Thank you for being so kind. Of course. I am so stinking excited to play you guys. You don't even know. Um, also, it looks like I did break disc or the overlays by moving Discord over there, so that's cool. I wanted to look at, like, I'm looking at you guys, but you guys are on the other monitor. So everything's all broken again. <sniffs> Stinking Discord, why? Alright, anyways, I hate that I have to look over there. You know what? We're just gonna have to deal with a broken overlay right now because I want to act look at you guys instead of the monitor. Um, anyways, okay. So, information for chat. We appreciate you guys all being here and hanging out. Uh, we're obviously going to be immersed in the game as much as we can here. We'll, we'll address stuff 
uh, during breaks or, you know, when we got the time, but we definitely want to, you know, be in this story and not be as distracted. So I appreciate you guys being here. Um, alerts are supposed to be muted. Let's see if they are, but we appreciate all the support. But I think the time has come, my friends. Are you guys ready to heck and play some game? I'm heck Let's heck and go. Let's heck and go. All right. I'm going to say we are going to start off. You are in a, uh, well, I shouldn't say you're. Uh, I'm just going to give you the setting real quick. Uh, there is, you're in the middle of a town. There is a inn slash tavern. It is actually quite large. It's an inn and a tavern combined together. Um, a black-haired cleric person is sitting at the bar trying to trade in some uh, her uh, furs and stuff that it, she has recently acquired from the uh, the wear. She's talking to uh, the innkeep on trying to barter out some stuff here. Uh, in the far corner of the tavern, uh, you hear uh, some minstrel playing on some instruments. Uh, there's a bard sitting in a corner uh, playing some tunes. You know, maybe we should get some tunes. Let's get some tunes. Hold on. Hmm. Maybe this will this work. with those sweet tavern jams. Right? <laughs> okay. The the tavern is a, a little crowded, but that is totally fine. Let's get some tunes like you know what I'm doing here. I had this all organized, but apparently not. Um, anyway, imagine that there's tunes until I figure out what's actually happening. <laughs> uh, um, and... So, uh, Vasha, that would be you. You were uh, talking to the barkeep, and you were trying to barter some furs. Um, as you walk up to the bar, uh, he says, Hell! There's a little halfling, you know, standing on it. There's enough room for, like, a normal-sized person to walk through, but then there's, like, a little incline step for halflings to be at your height and stuff. He's like, Hell! I be Leonard Longbutton! What can I do you for? Hello, Leonard. I am here to trade in some of these fine furs. Fine furs, you say? Hmm. Yes. What have we here? What is this, rabbit? We got some deer? I don't even know what this is. <laughs> but yes, yes. Uh, what, what was you thinking for? Hmm. You, you're just passing through. We could offer you a night stay accommodations and some uh, food. Or are you looking for some comp compensation with gold? I would enjoy some food and a place to stay for the night. Wonderful. We have the most decadent of rooms available. Uh, what time is it? We're going to say it's almost noon. So uh, what would you have for some lunch? Anything in particular tickle your fancy? Do you have any uh, thing vegetarian? Ah, rabbit yourself, are you? Sure, we can offer you a fine salad. What else do rabbits I... eat? <laughs> salad is great. <laughs> Sure, get right down to that. And takes out like a, a hammer. You'd think that you'd ring a bell, but he just kind of smacks it on the bar. Just like, oh, that was cool. I shook up my webcam. That was smart. Um, uh, as he does that, he's like, one salad, smack. And uh, as that happens, uh, the, in the back of the inn, towards the entrance, uh, the doors kind of creak open, big old wooden door. And uh, a figure walks in, uh, literally looks like they're chiseled out of stone. Um, comes in. Also, heavy plated figure walks in. Dark skin. He looks like a rock's growing out his head. Uh, this would be in, or, uh, Sulfur kind of walks into the, the tavern. Uh, what would you be here in the tavern for, Sul Sulfur? He said it was around lunchtime. Yeah. Uh, we probably need a bite to eat. Bite to eat? You're gonna walk up to the bar? Yeah, I'll walk up to the bar. Cool. Um, so there's obviously quite a few uh, seats there. Uh, Vasha's sitting there. 
Uh, you can take a seat next to her or any place next to the bar. Whatever seems that has two empty seats beside me and that's so that like I'm not invading on anyone's personal space. Sounds good. All right, you make your way up to the bar and you sit down and Leonard comes over and is like, Hell, I am Leonard Longbutton. What can I do you for? Looks like two of you. We got many adventurers with the heavy plate. Isn't that heavy just to lug around all the time? I'm gonna like pick a little at the rock on my head and be like, Pick at the rock. Kind of used to carrying it. I see. You are quite the strapping lad. What can you? What can I do you for? Something hearty. Long day of work. Hearty. Hmm. Well, we got some nice flank steak here, if you so desire. Oh, I would desire. I, I did ask for something hearty. Uh, that would be two silver pieces, please. You, you have money. Yep, I will give him three silver. Oh, thank you for your generosity, and I will flow in a flagon of mead for your generosity. And he, bam! Smacks his mallet down on the bar. It's like, flank steak and a flagon of mead. I don't know why I yelled that, because I'm the mead maker. Gah! And then he goes over and, you know, pulls you a big old mug and slides it over to you. Um, in the corner, you kind of see a female figure with big, bushy, like, red hair, kind of picking at some, uh, uh, salads as well, and she, next to her, she also has a big old stack of furs and, I don't know, not pillaging, but, uh, obviously, been in nature, been collecting things for trade and barter. Uh, that would be you, Eva. You're in a corner. Corner? Nah. You're, you're kind of off in a little area. Uh, kind of observing what's going on probably like by myself yeah yeah <laughs> and for the record every time the the ha like the hammers come down on the bar she's like jumped visibly just a little bit oh no <laughs> <laughs> all right well leonard obviously does not uh realize that is happening um actually i'll say yeah uh, vasha and uh sulfur you guys are close enough you guys if you want uh go ahead and roll a perception See if you realize that uh, she has a visible jumpage. Also, I don't know if I'm in the right fantasy screen. There we go. Oof. Okay. Um, yeah, no. No. So <laughs> neither of you know that uh, there is a person. In, well, you know there's a person over there, but you don't notice the slight jumpage at the smackage of, of the gavel. Um, let's see. <laughs> so, uh, is there anything you're going to be doing here, Eva? Sorry, I'm still getting your guys' names in my brain. Or are you just kind of observing? Uh, probably just observing, but as well, probably just there to, to eat, like Josh. You're just picking at your foods? Yeah. All right. Um, unfortunately, I could not stink and find the music that I had prepared which is annoying as heck I had a uh, bard music but um there's a lovely bard tune playing um as you guys are you know picking at your food and you know going about your business uh the door kind of uh swings open uh the entrance and uh everyone kind of hushes because they, someone slammed open the door and a person, a haughty looking person, walks in and with long flowing robes, very ornate hair done up. And he's kind of looks around, scheming around. And everyone kind of takes notice of him and then everyone kind of starts getting back to their business again and kind of struts in. He obviously is a, a man of high, I don't know, order. He thinks a lot of himself, obviously. And uh, he walks up to the bar. And Leonard says, Hail, I am just like, I don't care who you are, sir. I'm here looking for someone. And then Leonard kind of just 
confused at his uh <laughs> forwardness he's like i'm looking for this gal and he holds up a picture and uh it's a it's a halfling and uh they obviously have a loot and they're carrying some things like she doesn't say much but she's in violation of our marriage accord and uh leonard's like uh well we get a lot of or, wrong voice we get a lot of passerbyers here I don't know what you could be talking about. And he kind of scans the room. And uh, the bard music has kind of stopped. And uh, the, the the bard in the distance is kind of freezing up. Trying to like hide in plain sight. And uh, the noble kind of looks around. And he's like, ah! There she is! And kind of just runs over. And uh, obviously, c creating a ruckus. Everyone's kind of observing what the heck's going on here. Um, the but the inn and bar kind of quiet down, and he approaches Zozo. He's like, "Yo, how dare you leave?" This is you. Nope. <laughs> Perfect <laughs> timing. Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> we we all have lives. It's totally fine. It's like, how dare you leave my my marriage proposal? Uh, so, so, uh, kind of step, takes a step back. Her eyes are, are pretty, pretty bugging out. I think she's trying to scan through her peripherals a way she can run. So, um, obviously that very discordant play, uh, gets the attention of everyone else in the bar. Um, so all the, everyone in the bar kind of turns and looks what the heck is happening over here. Um, obviously something threatening is going on here and, uh, the noble kind of presses forward. He's like, you're coming back with me. And he kind of tries to reach forward to grab your arm. Can she, can she try to, to dodge? Yeah, uh, roll a dexterity. Okay. Like that? Yep. Yeah, just fine. Uh, yeah, you were able to successfully like jerk his uh, movement. Uh, obviously, uh, you guys are able to witness that uh, this little halfling over here is quite in a bit of distress. Um, you guys do anything about it? You just kind of let it play out? Um, how far is she from me? Oh, uh, you're about 50 feet. This is a quite a large uh, tavern in, in um, you guys are kind of there's like five steps you're kind of up towards the bar uh, you can walk down the steps and there's like it's like a dance floor kind of thing and uh she was playing off in uh, one of the wall sides uh i'll step forward you, you're and... gonna get up from the bar and uh, approach the situation yeah yeah I'll, I'll stand up and make myself look you know big and imposing um so you get 30 feet within what close to him and be like hey what's going on all right let's see if uh he recognizes oh you you actually said something to him oh, wow he rolled a natural 20. okay um so you obviously said something to him um he kind of looks over his shoulder and is like you stay out of this and he turns back at zozo and he's he tries to reach for her loot uh you can roll a dex check if you want again sloth Okay. Or, I should say, Zozo. Did that work, or...? Uh, no, you could drag it onto the chat, and then it'll, it'll roll it. There you go. Okay, man, you, you're getting good rolls. Yeah, uh, he's obviously getting frustrated. Uh, misses your loot again. He's like, We have an arrangement! You must come here. At this point, I'm going to approach the situation, too. Uh, do you walk by Sulphur? Or... Yeah. Okay. You, you kind of walk up next to him? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so he, he recognizes that uh, you're approaching him. Um, he's obviously come in to this situation uh, without his bodyguards or anything. Uh, he's obviously 
not thinking because he's more angry at the situation um that he he's not being trailed or anything by his bodyguards he kind of looks over his shoulder looks at you then slowly turns around and says don't you know who i am i am sir richard reginald regius von klosterbunch third of the sixth house of the fourth dynasty of the twelfth sector of histogobia how dare you approach upon my business dealings I'm sorry. I have no idea who you are. What? But How dare. <laughs> you're causing a problem in here, and I think it would be smart of you to leave the situation. <laughs> How dare you. God! He looks around, realizing that he didn't bring any of his guards with him. And then he kind of looks you up and down. He also sees sulfur in the distance. You guys in full plate armor. You can kind of see him shrink back a little bit. He turns over, looks at Zozo's like, This isn't over. I'll be back. Your big heroes mean nothing against my mighty godsmen. Stomps off, trips his way up the stairs and looks around the, the barkeep in the tavern kind of chuckle as they see him try to walk away. And uh, he storms out the front. Um, I want to reach over um, to Zozo and place my hand on her shoulder. And say, are you okay, dear? <laughs> uh, Zozo looks up, her eyes full of appreciation. <laughs> she plays. All right, so this is all on you guys now figure out that one if she's mute or if she's mute and how she's communicating so this is all on you guys right here so she plays that little note for you um i'll approach her um put my hand on well, she's a halfling right mm -hmm. yeah uh, i'll put my hand on her head <laughs> ruffle her hair a little bit and just nod with like, I got you. That's cute. <laughs> yeah, she pulls away a little from the ruffle, but nods back. <laughs> okay. Um, so you guys successfully scare off this jerk face noble of a person. Um, after all that is kind of gone down, there's a over by Eva, there's another group of people and they're kind of talking, not necessarily hushed tones, but not overly, overtly loud. Um, you hear them kind of, um, Eva, you kind of overhear them speaking of, uh, a, a special stone, um, that has possibly been found, um, that has supposed to be able to grant wishes, um, to anyone that can activate it, uh, properly. And, uh, um, you kind of, you're just overhearing a little bit of information. Um, it's over by some, uh, through the, like the, past the mountains a little bit. It's about a couple days ride or, uh, walk to it. Um, if it has been actually officially found. Um, I don't think Josh or, uh, Sulphur or Vasha are close enough to hear it, but, uh, Moira... Uh, how, do you respond to anything that you're hearing? Uh, definitely listening, if anything. Um, maybe so much as like a, like a, oh, I've been looking for something to do, so maybe this is like the, this is the thing to go looking for. So, uh, so it's further away from like where the bar area is, where everyone else is, right? A little bit. It's about like 20 feet from the main bar. Um, I can, we can say, uh, Vasha and Sulphur. Are, are you done with the uh, helping out a little halfling friend or what what is uh what's going on with all three of you after all that situation went down I should ask um I would invite her to sit beside me yes yeah, so and be like listen if, if you need to hide um, you can hide behind me sit beside me <laughs> 
They won't see you past it. Yeah, so Zozo uh, very readily starts trailing behind him everywhere he goes. A little feet. <laughs> uh, so do you actually take your spot back at the bar because that, you know, your backs are towards the entrance? Or do you take um, another I'll table? Move over so we would be like on a side of it. So that way, she, coming in, they wouldn't see Zozo past me. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so if you're going, so if you were. You know, at the the parallel of the en- the entrance is here. The parallel of the bar is here. Is where you were at. So you yeah. guys are now at the perpendicular. That means you're about thirty feet away from Moira now. Uh, or okay. sorry, Eva. Um. So actually, if you roll a perception, you might be able to hear what's going on. Uh, what What are you doing, Vasha? Uh, I want to move closer to the entrance. I guess at that point. Um. You're gonna go get nice, Josh. You're getting all your bad rolls out of their way. Um, are First you... one of the campaign. <laughs> are you gonna go grab like your? I'm assuming you guys didn't finish your food yet. You're gonna go grab like your salad and just go closer to the yeah. entrance. Yeah, just so I can keep an eye on who's coming in and out. Okay. Um. So do you exchange words with uh this big hulking figure that was next to you? Do you get either of you guys exchange words at all? You obviously can tell. Actually, um, Josh will see that perception check was for because this interaction is going down. You're uh, seeing if you recognize any s- symbolisms or anything on uh, Vasha. Vasha, you want to roll a perception to see if you see anything on Sulfur? If you roll a one, okay. Um, all right. So you don't recognize any sort of symbols or anything on this figure. Uh, but you do recognize that he is uh, also a cleric. Um, you guys have some some sort of that divine connection. Uh, you guys are able to recognize uh, that you have a, a similar kind of power. Um, so as uh, Sulphur's walking with Zozo, you're walking to the front. You guys exchange any words or anything? Um... Keep an eye on her, please. Like, I feel like at that point, if I knew he was a cleric, I would trust him immediate trust. a little bit. So, yeah. Gotcha. Cool. Uh, I'll just nod my head and say, more than welcome to come and sit close to. I I think I'm going to take an, take an eye towards the front of the tavern. Keep an eye out over there. Make sure douche, douche face McGee doesn't come back. Okay, so you go take a... You're, you're about 15 feet from the entrance, uh, taking up a, a location that is strategic enough that you can actually see people coming in before they would recognize that you would be there for any sort of offensive. Um, you grab you grab your salad beforehand and you can finish that off. Uh, Sulfur and uh, Zozo, you go kind of take a more uh, cautious approach so you can actually keep an eye on the door as well, uh, but you'll have time to react in any sort of uh, situation that might arise. And uh, Josh, or sorry, Sulfur, go ahead and roll uh, Perception again. Uh, Zozo, actually, you can as well, since you're right there. That's a much better roll. <laughs> My first double It's digits. technically two ones. <laughs> yeah. Are you just going to be rolling ones all night? Apparently. <laughs> Sorry, I'm blind and it's it's very small. Where is perception? Um, it'll be on the first tab on your character sheet, and it should be uh towards the middle. Middle, yes. No. Oh, there it is. Wait. Wait, I don't even see it either. Where'd you guys see it? under the skills tab oh under skills oh, oh that's okay. right it's a perception is a skill yeah <laughs> oh. is it working 
unable to open window using wildcard link? Oh, um, so grab the your plus five and drag it into the chat. That should work. I don't know what the wildcard link okay. was. That's interesting. Okay, okay, okay. There's no cars in D&D. &D. Cool. Um, okay, actually, um, we'll say uh, you guys are also able to overhear what is going on. Uh, you, you, you don't hear quite as much as uh, Eva does, but you are able to make out a uh, special stone and Grant's wishes uh, beyond mountains. Kind of thing. Um, the, the, some time passes. Um, Zozo, you, you begin to s slowly relax after uh, the altercation that kind of happened. Uh, you're still a little on edge because you don't know if he's coming back uh, with any sort of backup. Um, but you guys are just kind of finishing up your food. Uh, did you want to get any food or anything, Zozo? Uh, yeah, she might have looked around to see if anyone was eating anything sweet, like uh, a pastry, and pointed and ordered that. Perfect. Um, so they got the attention of Leonard and uh, just kind of pointed at the pastry. He says, ah, yes, yes. Come in right up. Smack, smacks the gavel. Uh, Actually, Zozo and uh, Sulfur rolls perception again. Actually, this is gonna be harder because Moira's. Uh, God dang, <laughs> he was uh, technically behind you guys. So yeah, you you don't see the, the jump again. Uh, <laughs> but Eva, uh, is there anything uh, that you're doing in particular? Uh, do you come up? To the bar, anything, try to sell your, I don't know, your find, your game. Um, what are you doing? So while she's finishing food, is there anything additional that um, I would be able to hear from like, like listening to what they're saying, like from like what direction the mountains are, where exactly it is, any like way to get there? Like what's the, the gossip, what's the tea? Yeah, um, so what you're able to glean is it's beyond the mountains to your, east um it's kind of near a forest it's a uh, it seems to be like it's a an abandoned town um although you kind of overhear that um it's it's an abandoned like ghost town but uh weird things are kind of happening there um one one of the members that says ah that's just a a ghost story this, this, this sounds like an urban legend i don't know what you're talking about I don't think it's worthwhile investigating. Um, you're able to pick up that information, but um, from the speaking, you're able to discern uh, there is indeed, through, through your wanderings, that there is an indeed an old abandoned town, so you could know the direction uh, to where it is. Okay, so probably after that, in the process um, of like finishing up food and everything, um, I probably would go up and at least try to get some money from the furs that I would have gotten, um, at least to like get me through the next leg of the journey. Because at this point, I think she's probably pretty set on like going to check it out. Okay. Uh, so you walk up to the bar to talk to Leonard. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, you kind of wave him over. Uh, we'll say you're like, how far away are you from uh, the rest of the, the people at the bar? Uh, it's staying a respectable distance, like not not within like arm's reach of anyone, at least. Like ten feet. Probably, yeah, at least. From a this big hulking, like rock man. Yeah. Okay. Um. He says, "Hell, I trust that your salad did you well." Uh, yes, thank thank you. What can I do you for? Uh, I know there was probably another trader earlier here, but I do have some extra furs from further away that I've been taking care of. Uh, I'm not sure if you would be interested in any of them. Oh, uh, yes, yes. I was wondering what you were doing with that. Seems an awful lot to carry on a travel. But uh, yeah, we, we sure could take those off your hands. The problem with having no storage other than what can be carried on one's back. <laughs> like, oh, so she thank probably you. starts like, laying it out. Or some of them. 
uh, the music like, changed. GM discretion is how exotic they would be, I guess. Yeah. Uh, we'll say that it's game from the similar area, so like rabbit, deer, um, the like. Um, he off he offers you uh off also uh place to stay if you need it or a uh, coin. I'll be journeying out from here, so I'll take the coin if that's no trouble. Sure, sure. Uh, how does uh twelve silver pieces sound? That sounds perfect. It should get me through the next part of the journey. Fantastic. Let me get you that right away. Slaps the gavel, and uh. Jump. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll perception again. Actually, uh, Vasha, you can roll perception too because it's close enough. Someone's got to recognize that you're not liking the hammer hammer slap. Also, sorry, is this me rolling too? Uh, yeah, all three of you. <laughs> Vasha is the farthest away and <laughs> rolls the best. <laughs> Oh, it's great. Um, so, she, since Eva is next to you, and also since she's closer to the hammer, the, the jump is actually quite large. You can tell that it was kind of trying to be contained because she knew it was coming, but still, uh, the jump happens. Uh, Basha, you recognize that uh, there was a jump that happened there. Uh, let's see. Zozo, you, uh, you're also able to recognize... That, uh, yeah, uh, that something happened. You don't know if that was the hammer that smacked or, but you can tell that, uh, Eva is, was, a, has a little bit of distress. And, uh, Sulfur is just really into his steak. <laughs> uh, he, I, actually, no, we'll say you're really into your steak, but also your, most of your attention is focused on Zozo. I mean, there. Yeah. They're good. All right. How how does that how does this play out for you guys? Vasha, you respond. Yes. So no, go ahead. Jose doesn't know why she jumped. Obviously, but she kind of looks over and. Um... Yeah, I guess she starts staring. Okay. Uh, Moira, or not Moira, Eva, uh, you notice that a little halfling head kind of peers forward and kind of looks in your direction, kind of inquisitively to see if you're okay. So at that point, I think, and one thing that she definitely, and this, I thought of this, but one thing that she would do is. Um, when the per um when like the barkeep comes back with the coin, um, she would like lay a f like one at least back on the counter and be like, uh, if there's anything she'd like as a as a hot drink, uh, see that she gets it and points over to to Zozo because she'd seen what's going on and just she like looks oh. over and she says, women are not a business deal. Okay. Uh, oh, hold on a minute. Audio balance could lower the players. Okay, I can do that. Thanks for letting us know. That might be better. Okay. Um, very kind of you. Um, so he, he he understands it. It's like, oh, then he go. He kind of just looks over at you, Zozo, and just kind of like, is it you want anything? Uh, go. And Zozo looks if there's a uh, hot chocolate she can point to anywhere. Um, nothing in your immediate vicinity. I mean, you'd have to go walk to individual tables to see if someone had a hot she chocolate. She would do that. She would start looking around. She's going to get up. And peering into drinks to find the one she wanted. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, that's heckin' adorable. Um, Leonard kind of gets a very confused look. He's like, what the heck? Okay. And, uh. He stays at the bar, and then uh, you can kind of you you find some hot chocolate. So, how, how do you uh, respond with that? Uh, she points to it and looks at him and sees if he understands. And if he doesn't, she might try to take it and show him. 
Okay. Uh, he he kind of looks at you. This interaction that's going down, and kind of looks at uh, Sulfur and Eva, just confused as hell. Um, and kind of leans forward, and then realizes like, okay, um, and slowly gets up and kind of walks over to where you're at, and then looks at you, and then looks down at the cup, and he's like, "Hot chocolate." Coming right up. And he obviously tries to go to smack thing, but he realizes his gavel is left at the bar. He kind of shakes off the confusion and walks over to the bar. And says, Coming right up and smacks the gavel again. Um, at this point, I'm going to say you, you all guys can just recognize that Eva kind of just jumps every time that the, the gavel gets smacked. Um, he's kind of Leonard is oblivious. Um, this is just his routine. It's part of the tradition of the inn. Just smack the gavel when an order happens. Um, oh, thank you, Peanut. No. And, uh... <laughs> point, you were just, just getting gavel smacked here. Um, okay, so he serves up some hot chocolate for you. Uh, seems that you guys are able to see that Zoza really likes her sweeties. Um, as you guys are all kind of uh, you, uh, Zozo, Vasha, and Eva, as you guys are kind of near each other, you kind of feel, uh, how do I explain it? They're, it's an inexplicable, like, uh, a pull or a vibration towards when you guys are near each other. Um, you're not quite sure what's going on, um, but you guys feel like there's some, uh, connection, uh, between you three here. Whether or not you acknowledge any of this is up to you guys. I don't think I would acknowledge it, but I think at this point I would definitely move closer to the group. Um, at this point, I would recognize that uh, Zozo uh, does not speak. <laughs> After pointing to all the different drinks <laughs> and looking at them. <laughs> oh yeah, we could have we could have RP'd that. You, you saw Zozo walking around looking at everyone's drinks. <laughs> so I think I think at first when she wasn't doing it, I think maybe because of the situation that I would have thought that she um was just scared of what was happening. But I think at this point I would recognize that he she's just not talking. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. Um, as you, uh, you, you walk towards the rest of the group, um, you all kind of feel a sense of, uh, like, at ease or at calm or, like, there's a purpose here, like, you, you're all meant, it's a very strange feeling to be, like, something just telling us that this is, there's right here, this is ordained or something that needs to be happening here, um, with you guys in this little group right here. It's a, it's like a, an innate calling, I guess you could say. I don't know what it is, but it just kind of feels funny. Actually, I don't know if I should have you guys roll to see if any of you recognize that others are feeling a little goofy or not. I'll let you guys RP that if you want. the strange feeling that all of us were brought together <laughs> in this moment. <laughs> and I feel like we need a plan because this person is going to come back for this small bard. And it's probably not safe to stay here. Yeah, so so looks up from her hot chocolate. She kind of thinks, and then uh, she nods in your direction. Yeah, there's I'm a... uh, Vasha, by the way. Yeah, that would be good to introduce. <laughs> um, 
I'll just tap myself and be like, sulfur. And Eva probably looks over from and from before when like it was a weird feeling. She probably had gone back to like maybe put on her cloaks and then realized that maybe the feeling started to wane a little bit the further away she got and then came back closer again to like maybe I don't know like put her like dish or something like back on the on the barkeep counter and like it, it like came back and then she just looks over and and looks at Zozo and is like is there anywhere that we can take you that's safe for you from him and she just looks at her and for a moment and then just goes oh um Eva Uh, Zozo nods when you say your name, but um, in response to, I guess, if there's anywhere safe, she just... and shrugs. So this is where the fun part comes in, is you guys gotta learn what all her sounds mean. Um, <laughs> do I know of any, like, caves or like mountains nearby mm -hmm. uh you're aware of uh a, a set of mountains that are in the distance um you when you overheard those people talking about uh, a special stone you were able to discern that the mountains that you're aware of are probably the mountains that they were talking about i'll bring up that uh well i know there's some mountains with some folklore but I personally would like to go there to see the rocks and the minerals. Um, might be safe. I know my way around those types of areas. Okay, how's the? How do you guys respond? Well, I'm certainly interested. <laughs> Also, you guys don't know Zozo's name yet. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> Maybe is, is it possible that, that the noble would? Have... Um, we could say that. Um. Also, there's uh, there's like pen and paper around too. If you wanted to write, um, would that be yeah, something Zozo, Zozo would do? Try her... Yeah. Here. All right. I'll write it. I'll write it how Zozo would write it. Okay. You kind of scribble down your name. Actually, yeah, if you're going to RP it, that's great. I'll do that. There you go. Okay. So you guys all see this scribble here, and you can try to make that out. 7070? <laughs> Is your name 7070? <laughs> You can see that uh, she, she feels a, a little a little self-conscious about it, but she's like, no, that's not right. It kind of does a, a nose scrunch. Um, you guys can uh, roll perception if you can see, figure it out. Oh, uh, I or, would say that uh, I, I was just trying to lighten the mood. Yeah. Or insight, I guess. <laughs> nope. Holy crap. <laughs> Today's the day. There you go. There. <laughs> All right. Uh, you guys, uh, Vasha, you can actually, you can be like, you Does that say, uh, Zozo? Is that, is that your name? And, uh, whether or not you, yeah, you, it sounds kind of a cheery tune, so you're able to discern that that's probably right. Uh, you could confirm, obviously, whether or not. That's how she communicated that. And and you you speak through your your instrument. We're gonna have to make like a special language at some point, whether or not people can speak Zozo. That sounds awesome. Then you guys communi can communicate from like distances, and no one will know. Oh, that sounds awesome. Uh, anyway, um, so, so you guys all learned, learned each other's names. Uh, it's it's about noon about now. Um, what do, what do you guys want to do? You don't know if that noble's coming back or anything. 
Um, but you you finished up your your lunch. Um, you've offloaded your furs and stuff. Uh, it's essentially your your business here is concluded. Has Ava come to join us yet? Or yeah, Ava's uh, next to you. Okay. Or within the group area. I've noticed her by now, right? Like, I noticed the last yeah. gavel. I'm going to look, just look over to her. Be like, I assume you heard everything. Did you want to join us? I've heard it's safer to travel in a group, but I can carry my own weight, I promise. Well, if we want to leave... I might have a plan to pull a quick one over on that noble there. Now that's something I would be interested in, actually. <laughs> Do tell. Being, you know, I just scratch some dust and dirt fall off from my head. Seems like no matter how much Rock I do it's an infinite. Um, he goes, I can manipulate the earth. We can uh, make it look like when I point to the little one there, 7070 wants to, <laughs> is going that way. But then I can cast a beautiful spell and make it look like we're actually, and we can go somewhere else, leaving no trace of us. Practical illusions, a good skill to have, I think. That does sound like it would come in handy. At least buy us some time and throw them off a bit. So, so nods vigorously and does a little hop. Okay. Um, so it sounds like the party is in agreement. Uh, do you head towards a mountain range? Uh, so I would get, um, I would point to Zozo to start walking the opposite way but keep within 30 feet, and once she's at 30 feet, I will cast Pass Without a Trace from my racial ability on the four of us. Okay. So for the next hour, we have plus 10 to stealth, and we leave no traces of where we go. Perfect. All right. Uh, so mark off your, um, your spell slot. It is a racial ability. Oh, lucky you. L is that the one uh, you get to use once a day? Yep. Nice. Cool. All right. Um, so you all are successfully passing without traces. Um, you make your way out of town towards the, the mountains. Is that your guys' plan? Yeah. Okay. Um, you guys go for uh, a walk for a better part of the day. Uh, Zozo and her little legs is obviously uh, taking the brunt of the force of the walk here um, since there's a no cart or horse, but you know she's also accustomed to traveling, so it's not too bad. But she definitely gets a, a bigger workout. Uh, you guys are traveling um, for the better part of the day. Uh, you make it towards uh, the mountain range. You are able to find some uh, unused caves. Um, if anyone wants to roll nature to see if uh, there's any sort of uh, danger or, you know, predators around. You can go ahead and roll that. My goodness. <laughs> I don't know what's with these rolls. <laughs> you, you just get good rolls in real life. Yeah, it, everyone says <laughs> it's the curse of the yellow dice. Curse of the yellow dice. I love it. <laughs> Bosch's rolls are coming out to play now. Jeez. All right. Well, that makes sense, too, since you are a, uh, a nature cleric. Um, but through the combined efforts here that you guys are able to find uh, an old abandoned cave, it's not being in use. Uh, you seem to find a place that will be safe to stay for the night um, as you uh, continue your travels. Um, it's, uh, it's about dusk uh, about now. Uh, you guys can set up camp. Um, as a, you are, we're walking towards the, the mountains that you guys kind of overheard, uh, you kind of feel that tug getting stronger uh, towards the direction, tor towards the forest that is a little more west. Um, you all kind of feel this, uh, actually, Vasha, um, 
Sulfur and Eva feel this tug, um, since they're kind of more of attuned to the nature a uh, bit here. Uh, but you feel kind of uh, the tug in the, the direction that you kind of overheard these people talking about. I didn't hear that conversation. So. That's right. You didn't hear that conversation. Although you do feel a tug, nevertheless. So whether or not you want to bring up, this is up to you guys. But other than that, uh, you guys have a nice camp set up. We should do, get some nice campfire. Let's see. I'm going to look at Zozo's loot or ukulele. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to, like, is it just wood? Are you asking that? No, no, I'm like, I'm trying to perceive if it's just like. Oh, got I've... you. Okay. So, uh, Zozo, you she see. She notices you yeah. look and she kind of covers it a bit, but, like. Perfect. <laughs> This big old rocky man just peering in your direction. No, 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 I, I, I might be able to help you out in the future. Just get closer. And then I get up and go outside and look for a tree. <laughs> okay. Cool. Sounds. Don't know what that means. I'm going to go find a tree. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Sulfur kind of gets up, goes and. Why are you looking for a tree? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to look for, like, some more firewood. Oh, okay. Um, do, you, do you let the party know, or do you just kind of go, like, okay? Oh, no, my. I am not a very charismatic person. Perfect. And I don't okay. For social so you just get up and uh, walk out the cave. <laughs> uh, you guys can say however you respond to that, however you want. You're just kind of getting up. I don't. I'm not. I don't notice. Okay. Um. Yeah. Th th obviously, there's. This is a very rocky, uh, mountainous formation. Uh, but there's some trees around that you can gather some firewood. Perfect. It's about 7 p.m. Sun starting to go down. Um, you do have an, a nice area here that uh, you guys know you'll be safe here for the night. Um, how you guys? Um, this is actually all on you guys. How you interact? You just met this group of people. You obviously seem to be traveling together now. Um. Well, go ahead. Oh, I was going to turn towards Eva and say, I saw you also brought in uh, some furs for trade. Are you a hunter? Mm, uh, when, well, when it is called for, I suppose, but not by choice. I'd rather deal with things humanely, but sometimes it just calls for uh, bringing by a means to an end, I guess is the kind way of putting it. That makes me very happy to hear that. <laughs> I'd rather not hurt an animal if I can help it. It is my duty to protect nature. So I appreciate that you are being kind. And she kind of just like looks down at the ground and <laughs> like there's nothing that she can really do around here that's like quite because usually she would have probably like done a little trick or something to be like oh yeah well i'm just you know i'm a druid but it's kind of just sitting in a cave so she well you do have druid craft uh, oh true uh yeah that's a cantrip isn't it mm -hmm. oh i could do that i mean obviously so, up to you 
Yeah, is there a way to do that? To just be like, just make like a random flower grow like out of like the floor or out of her hand yeah, just, or something like um, that? Yeah, as long as it meets the requirements of the spell, just explain what uh, you do. Uh, it should be in here, correct? Yes. Oh, there's still no information for it, but essentially she just kind of looks down and like holds out her hand. She says something under her breath quietly, but it seems like almost mir not miraculous, but it's, you know, there's no grass around. It's just like there in, in a cave where nothing should be growing, but a single flower just grows right out of the ground and just stays there and then doesn't wither away or anything. It just kind of sits there and she just looks at it fondly for a moment mm. and just goes, I'd rather protect things like this versus harm it. All right, I, sh I just made this spell available. It should now show oh, up perfect. for you. Okay. Um, but yeah, you see this, uh, obviously, in the middle of a cave, there's no sunlight. There's no way that an actual flower should be able to grow here. You see the, the rock kind of split and crack open as this. What kind of flower do you want it to be? Uh, would a daisy make sense? This is you, dude. I'm uh, sure. Let's make it a daisy. Why not? All right. It kind of forces its way up through the the rock and the gravel, and slowly comes out with a little bloom and just blooms out. You got this little daisy here that's kind of just swaying in the cave wind with you guys now. There we go. Um. Okay. So there was a little conversation are you are you still gather, gathering firewood sulfur no uh, i would gather maybe a little, like a bundle or two and then bring it back okay um did you just go find like branches and stuff or did you actually chop down some trees i'd like to chop down and try and chop down a tree okay um what is your weapon i'm gonna, I'm gonna no i was gonna beat it with a mace I was gonna say you're not chopping nothing you got a mace <laughs> you're, just, you're just blunt forcing it poor tree um, That's one way to do it. Okay. Uh, because a like, good thing the nature ones are not here. No, I'm I'm making something tree. happen with this. Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, as uh, you guys are having this conversation, you hear these just brutal thuds and cracking of wood. It's just splintering. Something just sounds very strange. Um, <laughs> whether or not v Vasha, Eva, Zozo, you guys respond, but something. It's very loud and crashing through uh, some of the trees. Actually, hmm. Roll, I I roll you three perception roll a perception <laughs> because he's out of sight. You guys roll a perception. We'll see if you are able to tell what that oh. natural 20. Yeah. <laughs> see, yeah, Nat, or uh, all the, your rolls are just getting higher and higher. All right. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, Eva, you kind of jump up startled. One, um, it's that loud crack that kind of from reminiscent of the bar where you were hearing the mallet, so you're kind of still on edge with that. But also, um, you're under the assumption that there might be a big creature coming through, uh, busting down some trees. Um, Vasha, you're just kind of like, what the hell is, like, going on out there? You, you know it's not a tree. It doesn't sound like something naturally busting down some stuff. Zozo, you're just equally confused as to what the heck's going on, um, but you're also not worried that uh, something is uh, coming through. But, uh, you guys can respond accordingly. Smack! Uh, so I think I'm going to get out and move so towards the entrance a little bit. Okay, so you're going to move towards the entrance, would you say, Vasha? I was going to say that I I didn't initially realize that uh, Sulphur had left, but at that point, I, I when I hear the big noise, I, I realized that Sulphur is not with us any longer, <laughs> and... <laughs> and you can obviously like, make out that it's something smacking wood. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I would kind of, like, glance out of the cave and... And be like, I wonder if it's the big rock man. <laughs> you say that out loud? Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, Zozo, you say you were going to say anything? <laughs> Uh-oh. You'd be loser? Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh oh right, Hopefully, we didn't lose her and she comes back. Um, but Eva, how, how do you respond? Uh, I kind of just <laughs> look over at Vasha and very confused I go what kind of what would he be doing that could possibly make a noise like that <laughs> the big old rock man making big old rock man noises I don't know he said he manipulates the earth so maybe oh she's back he caused an earthquake or something <laughs> <laughs> I think we would have felt that maybe could possibly be true um okay uh you're back Zozo we, we lost yes, you for a sorry, second. Sorry, I disconnected. Oh, no, you're fine. Uh, we were worried something crazy happened. Um, okay, so how do you respond to the the smacking noises that are going down? Uh, I imagine she was, like, plucking away and just stopped and looked. And when she saw Eva go towards the cave entrance, she probably would have followed. Okay. Um, so you were just kind of, like, playing your uh, instrument as you're just kind of hanging out. That's cool. Hold on. I really want to know what I did with the music that I had for you guys. Aha! Found it! There you go! You're playing music for your friends. Can you guys hear that? I hope you guys can hear that. You guys can't hear, is it too quiet? You hear it now? Loud for me. Yeah, here. Hmm. You can't hear it? It should be going through Discord. What are you doing, Discord? Hmm. So you guys haven't heard any of the background music I've been playing, huh? No. Oh, boo! <laughs> I've been playing stuff for you guys. Why isn't, uh... Maybe it's just because it's stinking quiet again. Which really sucks for me, because then it blows out my eardrums. Alright, tell me if you guys can hear this. You guys can't hear that? Uh oh, did I just kill my OBS? Because you guys are all frozen. Uh oh. Oh no. No, 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 no. Okay. Sim simmered down. Were you guys able to hear any of that? What the heck? No. <laughs> oh, I'm playing all sorts of cool stuff. I want to be cool and... Is it because stuff changed on me? Can you hear it now? Boo! Oh, I'm so upset. I even tried turning like your volume specifically up in Discord, but I still can't. <laughs> Aw, I have cool music and ambience and all that cool stuff. It's weird because it's like... It says it's going through stream, but for some reason it's not going for you guys. That's annoying. All right. I can hear it on your stream, but I can't hear it. Anymore. Yeah, I can hear it on the stream, no problem. That's annoying. All right. Well, unfortunately, uh, you guys don't get the cool ambience, and I'm trying to set the moods for you guys. I'll just put my own on. Yeah. Right. Um. I guess. I'll have to do some sort of a, another mic check again sometime to fix that. But anyway, okay. Um, does anyone go investigate the loud rock man chopping trees? I would like to. Okay, go for it. Yeah, I'll probably follow. I have dark vision, so at least by going out, I can see if anything in the immediate vicinity is a threat. Okay. Uh, you guys are... So, so it would take a lot, too. Okay. Uh, you guys... Uh walk out um in about 30 feet 
uh, in the distance, you see a uh, sulfur just using, obviously, using his mace to smack at this tree. Um, before every time I go to smack, mm -hmm. you see me cast like a little guidance spell on my mace and then smack it again. <laughs> really? Okay, hold on. I, oh, you guys don't hear the cool sound effects I'm gonna play. That's upsetting. Um, here. So every time you, there you go. You you. There's your guidance spell going off and smack the tree and then do it again. Nope, that's the wrong one. There you go. Do it again. Smack the tree. Um, looks very fruitless. He's just. Instead of, he's not really chopping down the tree as more of just pulverizing it into pieces. Um, but it, technically it's working. So, uh, whether or not you guys say anything is up to you. I just look at him. I mean, very it, it's getting the job done, I guess. <laughs> like, why like that? Like, it's a very, a look that says very much, I, okay, you're doing it, but why like that? Yeah. Um, go ahead and roll a perception, Sulfur. See if you uh, recognize that anyone is staring at you strangely. Are you all outside the cave looking in his direction, by the way? Yeah. Okay. New. <laughs> How far away is he? He's about 30 feet. Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Dude. Can I do something random? Sure. I mean, if you're good, if your character is going to do something, you think they're going to do it, do it. Right. I'm going to cast a spell. Okay. What are you going to cast? Thaumaturgy. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Do, do what you're going to do. I'm, I, I'm uh, excited to see what's going to happen here. Okay. So... Okay. I am going to cause my voice to boom up to three times as loud as normal. Okay. <laughs> I already like where this is going. <laughs> I think I know where this is going. <laughs> okay. Uh, what are you going to say? I'm going to say, what are you doing to that golden tree? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> It's, uh, oh, okay. Um, what, uh, what would I, sh should I have you roll, Silver? Because you rolled that you don't recognize that they came out of the, the forest. Or the forest, the cave. Um, here, there, there's your little ambiance. Um, but all of a sudden you hear this giant booming voice, you know, two feet from you. What are you doing to that tree? <laughs> Anything? Any response? <laughs> oh, um, I'm just, uh, I'm gonna look around and be like, I need wood. <laughs> just, uh, I need wood. Okay. It doesn't um, matter that there's, like, this loud booming yeah, voice just, yelling at but, him. He's just like, I, I need wood. <laughs> just responds. This is what happens when you have the hermit background. You just kind of respond. <laughs> The, the, the reaction was like, I've I've had weirder happen, so whatever. <laughs> um, so you didn't warn Eva or Zozo that you were gonna explodey blast. No. Um, so how do you guys respond to this giant booming voice coming out of nowhere? Eva probably vocalizes it. She probably like just jumps back like a foot. <laughs> goes like, oh, Joe, oh, okay. Uh, you, yeah, you are, you're able to obviously recognize that it comes from Vasha, but at the same time, boom! <laughs> so for a second, wow, impressive. <laughs> Go ahead, Zozo. Zozo doesn't jump, but she takes a step to the side and kind of glances 
Like, she didn't expect that, but it didn't scare her either. Okay. And then uh, when he says he needs wood, she hides her, her loot oh. behind her back. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Oh, I love that you guys are getting into your characters. It makes me happy. Okay. Uh, so, Sulfur responds, I need wood. Um, he's 30 feet, so you don't hear his response, uh, Vasha, obviously. Uh, but you see that he kind of obviously spoke to nothing. <laughs> uh, you guys just continue to watch him smack he this. He just keeps doing it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm okay. like, in my routine, like, just, I need wood. I'm oh my doing God. something. I'm just gonna scoff and like walk back into the cave. When, when your only tool is a hammer, everything is a nail. That that that's what's going on right now. Just all right. Well, Once don't bother getting a sharp point. object or a sharp rock. We can just smack it with a blunt object. It'll do. I could put my weapon on fire, but I think that would be bad. And yeah, that's a bigger campfire than you I need. Have like three ways to set my weapon <laughs> on fire. Okay. Um. Vasha, you walk back into the cave. Zozo, yeah. Eva, what do you do? I'm gonna just follow in the interest of... You guys just kind of shake your heads and be like, oh, whatever, he's... It's working, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, you guys walk back into the cave after, you know, five or ten more minutes, uh, Sulphur comes in with not logs of wood, but splinters. And just kind of... He chucks them into the corner and chucks some more on the fire. Yeah, you take a seat next back to the fire. Yeah. I'm just gonna kind of glare at him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start taking my like hand and start drawing like spell casting circles in the dirt on the ground, okay. and then I'm gonna lay all those twigs and about five crossbow bolts in there, and then just start chanting and. It takes an hour to do this. You're doing a ritual. Uh, what are you doing? Yeah. I'm using uh, my... What is it called? Uh, uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Is it Channel I'm Divinity? My Channel Divinity. Mm -hmm. Artisan's Blessing. And you're you're essentially enchanting those bows? I am making an or, object. Uh, you're making arrows? A, no, I am making a lute or a ukulele. Oh! Well, fun! Okay, um, after about an hour, um, you, you sit in there, um, over time. Actually, do you want to explain how your spell goes off, or do you want me? I'll give you the opportunity. Go ahead. Me? If you want. Okay. Um, it's, if you guys seen Full Metal Alchemist, this is how I'm picturing it in my brain, just over a course of an hour. Um, you, you drew kind of this, the incantation, and you're speaking, and you kind of see, uh, the wood start to creak and slowly bend and unform itself and uh, slowly gets over the course of an hour uh, turns into a lovely little ukulele. I'm going to pick it up and try to play it like Sozo does and go, this is yes and play it horribly. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, uh, roll performance. <laughs> uh, and he said he's not charismatic. Watch him not twenty. <laughs> yeah, right. The one time. Oh, dude, it was almost did it too. I um, saw that too. Well, I okay. am negative to this. Okay, so uh, your your lovely little magic makeshift uh, ukulele here uh, still has like some twigs that are coming out of it with a little bit of leaves on them and stuff, um, but it it's a lute and it works. Or it's a ukulele and it works uh, fine. Obviously, you don't have any sort of uh, skill in playing the ukulele. Uh, you're trying to emulate what Zozo does. Um, she would <laughs> essentially what you convey is uh, your your understanding that she's speaking with her ukulele and you were trying your best to emulate <laughs> what her affirmation or yes is in terms of. Uh, her playing the ukulele. Um, I have made the Rosetta Stone for Zozo. Yeah. <laughs> she understands what you're trying to do, even though you don't do it right at all. <laughs> because you have no skill in performance or proficiency <laughs> in playing the uke. Uh, so, uh, how do you respond to that, Zozo? 
Uh, she gets really excited. She starts kind of hopping. Like, it's, it's not right, but she's never, I don't think she's ever had someone actually try to communicate on her level before. So she definitely, she sits next to him and she... I'm, I'm gonna, show up. Yeah, I'm gonna be like watching her fingers, but like I have giant yeah. sausage fingers, and I'm like <laughs> your, your giant sausage like, fingers and your tiny little loop. Or, you can... <laughs> so, uh, you guys, you get, you can uh, attempt to teach him or something if you want. Uh, you, you can keep playing. Um, if you guys want, you can just keep, you know. You do performance every now and then we're able to see if you actually picking up some chords but you guys are obviously making a little connection here trying to figure out how to it, it turns into more of like you're trying to figure out how to play the ukulele um because <laughs> it's hard to try to learn a language through the ukulele without actually having a context but hey you're making a connection uh eva vasha you uh, do anything the situation Eva is very much interested in the the spell that's cast. She doesn't watch the whole time, but she's very much like like every time she glances back, it seems like something has changed or something like has happened to to the wood in the in the spell circle. And she's like very interested in what's going on because she's more used to like the like repair nature. But yes, to a point, you can you can make things out of like the of what you take essentially, I guess. Nice. And that kind of speaks to you because that. if you you have to use something from nature, you're reusing it. Mm. Cool. Yeah, I was going to say at this point, I feel slightly better about him beating the tree. <laughs> um, because he he created something from it, so it wasn't just him nice. beating a tree mindlessly. Uh, do any of you else have any tools or instruments or game sets? By chance? I don't know if you do. I don't remember. I have an I herbalism know. kit. So do I. <laughs> um, so you guys are kind of sitting around the campfire and you're listening to, uh, to Zozo and her lovely strums and Sulphur's uh, mu notes. musical ruining of your ears. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, is there anything else you guys do through the night? It, it's getting night. It's about nine o'clock. You guys have been playing some ukulele. Um, would uh how how does Zozo respond? Is she kind of like, dang, this guy has no talent at so whatsoever, or are you still kind of a uh, jazz that you're you know you're sharing a moment? I think she's very encouraging. She keeps nodding and pointing, and like it sounds off. She might cringe a little sometimes, but like she she wants him to keep going for sure. Okay, well uh. Sulfur, you can add a makeshift ukulele to your inventory if you want. Um, <laughs> you obviously have no proficiency and stuff in it, but you have it. Uh, what are the rest of you guys doing? Uh, would it make sense for um, at some point when like the night starts to fall and like a like the like literally the sky starts to get dark and everything to um, right now you to go outside and like roll a, a perception check to kind of like listen to the sounds of the night and see if there's anything she can maybe hear from the direction that, that she's feeling that pulling yeah go for it uh right now right. it's it's dark now it's like 9 p.m okay cool um yeah go Let's ahead and... wow that's not gonna net anything um yeah you don't the roll today <laughs> you don't really uh feel anything different uh you obviously feel a uh, a desire to go towards you know that direction um but you don't perceive anything different than what you've been feeling all day um it, obviously the pull gets stronger as you guys were going towards the mountain because it's towards that direction you wanted to go uh, but nothing nothing new or significant has happened bash are you doing anything no, I think at this point, I, I kind of am lost in my own brain. You're, you're doing I, your I daydreaming? Kind of, yeah, I like zoned out the cringy music. Uh -huh. and... Oh, that's perfect. You started meditating like this is... No, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm tuning out. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, you go full zen. Um, yes. It is, it is getting late. Um, whenever you guys want to rack out your, you know, 
allowed to. Uh, yeah, uh, I would say I would probably start cutting the lessons short and then try and find a nice rock to lay on. Okay. Um, how how do you guys all do that? You guys just kind of snuggle up, get ready for the day ahead. Probably yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, and you're yeah. in, you know, it's a or it's a well covered cave. You're protected from the elements. Um, the, the entrance is like fifty feet long, so you're not gonna get any sort of rain or wind bothering you. So you got a nice little cozy cave here. Um, you guys sleep peacefully through the night um is, is, was there a particular time anyone wanted to wake up or you just wake up naturally uh it was probably up by dawn up by dawn what'd yeah. you say uh has... i would say probably just naturally whenever okay. the sun was rising okay well actually you're an elf you don't technically sleep you just meditate well, so. yeah yeah you could be up whenever uh, Zozo, Sulfur? Um, I probably sleep in the most. Okay. I think once people start waking up, Zozo kind of cues in and, and gets up herself. Okay. Um, we'll say it, uh, well, Eva gets up at dawn and, uh, because uh, Eva actually has to sleep being a half elf. Uh, Vasha, you are, you hear, uh, Eva wrestling. Uh, as she wakes up and goes to the, the front of the cave. Uh, Zozo, you, you get up about 20, 30 minutes later because um, you hear shuffling around in the cave. Uh, Sulfur, you're out. You know, you're out cold hot because you're a rock. Uh, you're out cold uh, until like 10, 10 a.m. or something. Um, what are you guys there, you three, doing in the meantime? Making some breakfast? What are you doing? Um, yeah, I feel like I would probably go foraging for some food. Go find some berries and or what not mm -hmm. edibles. Okay, uh, we'll we'll just say you guys are able to scour around long enough to uh, bring back enough food that you all can you know have enough food for some berries and vegetation. Um, Eva, miss, you said you were going to go around too? Uh, yeah, that and also keeping watch over like the entrance and still trying to keep an eye on like the area around. Okay. Uh, Zozo, what, what's your plan? Uh, yeah, she'd probably try to go find some berries. I don't know how useful Zozo is. I don't think she spent a lot of time in the wilderness foraging, so she might look to the others to see what they're doing and try to just emulate. Okay, so are you are you with in a distance of either Vasha or Eva, or are you like right with them? Uh, probably a little closer than they would want. Okay, if that makes sense. That that can work. Um, how uh, Vasha and Eva, whoever you're following, uh, let them know, and they can respond accordingly. Uh, Vasha probably. Okay, so you got this little halfling, obviously. Uh, observing what you're doing um she's a little close especially for you just being an outlander and stuff you're used to having your distance she's definitely within your bubble um but how do you respond she looks like she's looking she sees you observing the, the plant life and stuff and you're you're reaching out and picking some and uh, yeah. oh you know what uh those roll nature Oh, that'll be a skill. Yes. Oh, good roll. Okay. Um, as a, you're you're kind of you're observing Vasha, and uh, you you see she's picking some uh vegetation from this other plant over here, and you kind of look around, and uh, you you think you see a plant that's similar, and uh, you kind of you go to reach for it, and then you pull back, and you realize that. The berry or the uh, the fringes of the the leaves that Vasha is picking don't have the little purple outline that are the ones you're gonna uh, 
you're going to touch. So you kind of pull back and you look at it and you kind of keep looking back and forth. Vasha, um, go ahead and roll a... Actually, you, you'll know. She's close. Uh, you are able to see that she's actually reaching for uh, a plant that is uh, poisonous. Uh, but you do notice that she pulls back. Um, but she's still kind of curious about what's going on. Uh, <laughs> fortunately, she pulled back. How do you respond? If you do. Um... I guess I'm I'm a little uncomfortable that she's like so close to me, but like at the same time I'm dealing with it because I know like I'm kind of like I feel like I'm kind of taking care of her right now. Um since I saved her from the <laughs> the bad man. Um so I I, I see her I almost pick the poisonous one and go. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> Do not take that one. <laughs> and and so I, I pluck um, a leaf of the one I'm taking and I, I put it next to the one that uh, she was about to grab. And I, like, you, you see the difference. Um, you want you want this one, not this one. <laughs> <laughs> Hold that. Okay. Um, so you, Zozo, you can uh, you kind of, you acknowledge that you, you kind of feel a little proud of yourself that you were able to recognize that something was there and uh you're you're happy that you're kind of helping out here so you kind of scurry around and find another bush that is right and uh you pick some and you kind of come come show her that you found some <laughs> I'm like, uh, yes good job <laughs> Perfect. all right and she, she gets all happy and these are little halfling legs going pick, picking all the things. Um, Jot or Sulfur, you finally wake up. Um, no one's in the cave. Uh, the fire has obviously uh, died down. It's like 10 a.m. Um, the rest of the party is starting to walk back in and they, they have gathered enough food for everyone. Um, it's all vegetation and berries and stuff like that. Um, but there's enough for everyone so you all can have a breakfast. You also have, uh, I think you all have rations too. So if you want, you can just use a rations pack. I, I would trust their berries. Okay. But the first thing I do when I wake up, if they're coming back as I'm waking up, they would see me enchant my armor in the beginning of the morning. Okay. Um, also, uh, that's that uh, spell you were telling me about. Is that, one. is that, uh, what's the casting time on that? Uh, it's, it's, it's whenever you finish a long rest. Oh, that's right. Okay, so you just kind of wake up wah, and superpower your armor. Um, there's there's some slight humming and stuff as the rest of the team walks in uh, to the cave. You guys can't hear this, but I'm, I did a really cool long light spell. Mm. Um, they walk in and they just... Obviously, you're not in your armor right now, but they see you do something to your armor. They kind of hand off some food, and you guys have a nice little bit of a breakfast. Um, but you're all well rested and rejuvenated, and uh, full, and are ready to take on the day. How do you proceed? Does anybody else feel this pull? towards this direction. I just have this feeling that we should head that way. I, that's where I thought we were heading to before. That's why I suggested it. Remember, she's not aware of the, the conversation those people were having. Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> she's just kind of following around for Zozo. And this is the same direction of the the people that I was overhearing that mm -hmm. like the whole the whole part, right? Yep, yep. So only so, you you three are the only ones that know about the direction that you're going. Vasha has a weird longing to go that direction, but she doesn't know why. <laughs> and she doesn't know that's where you guys were planning on going. Apparently, there's some stone that. Grant's wishes or something, and 
the townspeople were talking about an abandoned village of some sort. One of them called it a ghost story, but I, <laughs> it wouldn't be the strangest thing I've ever heard of. But I think it's in the same direction of where we're feeling this pull. So it, it may be worth the trip to see if it has anything to do with what we're feeling. I definitely think we should head that way. Okay. Um, you guys ready to pack up and head towards the direction? Yeah. Or is there anything else you wanted to do while you're in camp? Nope. Ready to go? I think we're good. Okay. Um, let's see. You guys, uh, Set off uh, the direction you feel the pull. Um, over the course of time, the the longer you're traveling there, that 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 pull gets a little bit stronger. But also, um, it starts more turning in. It's like, hey, yeah, you this is the what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, there's a calling there. Uh, that yes, keep going this way. Yes, it, you get like endorphins rushing through as you you're going this direction. Um, you guys wake up. Um, you or you've already been woke up, but uh, you start traveling west uh, for some time. Um, you spotted uh, spotted a small paddock of trees off in the, the sparse path uh, that might offer some protection from the elements if something were to um, happen again. Um, you do wake up and you are all, I already said that, you guys are all fed up and ready to go. Um, but there's a road, uh, Directly to the south of this this forest uh, that you started walking by, um, and to the east you find the direction from the you've been traveling. Uh, the road, or sorry, the road heading west remains unexplored. Um, it winds gently towards the horizon uh, before disapp disappearing behind a hill. Um, you keep heading west a little bit longer um, as the tug gets stronger. Um, you start to see. Um, footprints every now and then on the paths um but then uh you kind of uh, approach this area i gotta share something in fantasy grounds um you approach the oh boy that's the wrong fantasy grounds hold on uh images sorry I did not have this open and ready can i just Share this and it work. We will see. All right, you guys have to let me know if you guys can see this when I share it. Oh no, is it not going to let me do it? Aha, okay. I will just do it manually. Share. Okay, do you guys see that? Sick. Uh, I do not have anything yet. Okay, so, uh, you might have to go to your images to your right. Oh, now it showed up. There we go. Oh, okay, I see. There you go. Okay. I have to make sure that I see it too. Um, but yeah, okay. So um, as you guys are traveling through, uh, you see this kind of in the distance. Uh, you see a small outcropping of structures uh, as you near the small settlement. You can determine, uh, even from this distance, distance uh, dila the dilapidated condition of the buildings. Um, there's scorch marks, uh, dot the ramshackled timber walls that surround the tiny hamlet. Uh, there's crude fences just jut out from the town. Uh, they enclose overgrown fields of grain and deserted pastures. Um, there's an archway uh, uh, welcomes, uh, welcomes you. Uh, Veilstone, uh, it must have said at one point, uh, but the VE and S and T have you know, falling off the sign, uh, you kind of hear a, a rhythmic rasping uh, coming from within the walls. Um, but this is uh, where you feel the, the tug strongest. So when you say rasping, is it like a, like a wind noise, an animal noise? It, it's, uh, it's more of like a hum. Kind of thing. Strange. 
Um, you guys are about, you know, 100, maybe 50 or 100 feet out from the, uh, from, from the town, I should say. How tall is that sign? Like from the ground? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 20 feet. From the bottom of the sign, you know, 20 feet up the bottom yeah. of the sign. It's still a bit too short. Trying to do something, are you? Trying I, to you, maybe vandalize it. Yeah, you, you have sneaky face. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you guys choose to enter the town or anything? Uh, I'm going to get a little closer to the entrance, maybe. Okay. You're not like in in the town quite yet proper, but close okay. to like where the gate is. Um, as you uh, approach, the the humming gets a little. It, it doesn't change in tone, but it's just obviously deeper and, and it's a little bit louder. Um, but as you enter or get near the town, uh, you find it looks definitely looks abandoned. Um, it seems to be mostly empty. Uh, definitely in desperate need of some repair. Um, the town seems vacant. Uh, no bustle. There's no voices, no people. Um, if you peer into the gate, uh, just off to the right, you find the source of a sawing, rasping noise. Um, it's a small, crude lumber yard sp uh, is spread out before you uh, under a small, open sawmill. Uh, you can see a slender figure feverishly draws and uh, saw back and forth across a smooth wooden timber. I must go approach. <laughs> I must go approach. Okay. Uh, as you approach... Um... Okay, so do you approach the figure directly, or how, how are you approaching, I should ask? Oh, I'm just walking over there, full armor, to see what's going on. You're just going straight for right it. Up to them. Okay. Um, you you kind of make your way up and... Uh, uh, the the figure kind of takes notice of you and says, "Uh, uh. oh no, that's that is not a good voice. I need a I need a voice. <laughs> Hold on. Um, how's mm, mm, something? No, no, not that voice. No. There we go. I don't know something like this. Um. Uh, uh hi. Uh, they they say in like a, a almost embarrassed tone. Um, the figure looks frantically around. Uh. She's very thin, uh, even for an elf. Uh, she's got uh, chestnut hair. Um, it's in an unkempt ponytail, um, and it's high on her head. Uh, there's a loose strand of hair uh, falls over. Uh, she's got a very dirty face, uh, partially obscuring uh, some pale blue eyes. Uh, she has a massive scar. Um, she has some spectacles that are uh, resting on top of her forehead uh, with what appears to be many adjustable lenses uh, for magnification. Uh, she's wearing a heavy leather apron over a simple patchy tunic and a uh, tattered uh, calf-length breeches. Um, a sizable tool belt rests at, at a jaunty angle on uh, her waist. It falls just a little, and uh, it like it falls a little down. She she hikes it back up a little uncomfortably. Uh, it seems to not be fitted quite right for her. Um, she's barefoot, and uh, she clearly hasn't bathed uh, in ages, but uh, uh, as you, you approach, uh, she, she kind of shocked and just like, uh, uh, Hi, w welcome to uh, Valstone. <laughs> and uh, she, she stammers through uh, a gaping smile. What was she attempting to try and do? Like right now? Yeah. Well, she's sawing wood. I'm going to just walk up, and instruct her and be like on how to properly saw the wood and uh, <laughs> um, no i mean she she obviously knows what she's wrong. doing um but i'm gonna try and show her like put your back into it more wait a minute be wait a minute you're gonna instruct her on how to properly cut wood mr smack trees with mace I, okay, it was either turn my mace into an axe or <laughs> make a or ukulele. Oh, that's hilarious. Okay. Um, let's turn my mace into an axe. Um, she kind of shoos you away and just like, 
I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy, busy. Please. I'm, I'm um, trying to help. I, I'm trying to help you. Um, the, the rest of the party, are you, uh, nearby seeing what's going down here? Uh, I see the saw. And, uh, I, uh, I'm gonna speak in Elvish. Okay. Oh, in this, when your guys are speaking in Elvish and stuff, you can say what you're saying if you want. Okay. And uh, then the people that don't speak Elvish will just have to act like they didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that way it just uh, makes it easier. Yes. Um. So basically in Elvish, I say that saw could come in handy. <laughs> uh, Wait, wasn't the lady an elf, though? Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah, this is, uh, she's... The the lady uh was busy dealing with this rock yeah. man. I was more so trying to just say invading like her space. Eva, yeah, like near me. Okay, um, so you say that to Eva? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I I respond back in Elvish, more concerned about. The, I I heard this town was abandoned. What is this frantic woman doing here? Uh, how far away? From uh, those two, are you guys? I are you guys like, still at the gate? Yeah, I think okay. we're still at the gate. Okay, so Maybe this... Maybe, like, inside it, but still by it. Yeah. Okay, so they... The person has obviously not... Uh, recognized... Or... Seen you guys, because... This rock man came in and interrupted her business, and... And is trying to use her tools, and she's just like, What the fuck are you doing here? Um... But you can see she's obviously she puts her hands on her hips and say like, it's like, sir, can I please ask you to step away? I assure you, I know what I'm doing. No, you're just gonna be here all day, and then you're gonna get hungry, and you're gonna like, oh, I didn't get food, and then this could be a problem for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She kind of just stares at you, just like blinking, like. You're in my way, and I don't want to say anything anymore. The rest of the party, you guys just kind of watching what the heck's happening? Yeah, but also kind of looking around, because it after Eva talks about how it's abandoned and there's the one person, then I'm I get a little more curious about why so I'm like looking around, trying to figure out. Are are you walking here. into the town as you're doing this? No, just okay. kind of. You're just observing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but less focused on the two of them and more just kind of. I got you. Okay. Um, as you uh, you're kind of just observing, and what you were able to take in, um. Actually, I've already explained everything pretty much already, yeah. but yeah, it's obviously strange that there's a it seems very much abandoned but there's one person feverishly working uh on this uh, the lumber mill here and uh you got a rock man over there obviously distressing this this lady over there <laughs> uh, i think i'm gonna approach both of them okay so you walk up um the, the figure has a rec Recognize uh, you walking up. It says, uh, uh, Welcome to Veilstone? She's obviously confused. This is more people than, obviously, that they've seen in a very long time. And uh, she's wondering if you're going to, you know, do something equally awkward and interrupt her, her work. Uh, thank you. Uh, but we heard this town was abandoned. What are you doing still working here? Oh, oh, yes, um, um, uh, lots of other folks around here, uh, they tend to keep their own business pretty good, um, we, we all stay at each other's way, um, you know, keep things nice and busy busy, uh, don't let me keep you, uh, you probably have lots to do. She gets, she kind of forces her way in between Sulphur and nudges him out of the way and gets back to Son. 
would it be investigation or perception to check for like other like signs of other people living here um like actually living here like she says uh you can do either one that you want actually whatever one okay. you choose may i insight her to see if she's actually telling the truth yes <laughs> oh uh well it's better than the last few hey there's a good roll josh hey. Hey, nice Okay, um, so you're just trying to perceive that um, if there is actually multiple people here or not? Yeah, like if she says that there's actually other people here, but they really keep to themselves, like are there really like, if if the town is really in that like of a state of, of distress, of decay, could there really be people here, basically? Okay. Um, as yeah, you kind of, you're looking around, um, it definitely... 100% seems deserted. Um, you see footprint, footprints in the, the dirt and the dust uh, moving throughout the town. Um, but as far as you can tell, it's, it's deserted. Um, and Sulphur, uh, you were trying to roll, see if she's lying? Yes. Um, she's not lying. To the best of what you understand is, uh, she says, there's people here. And uh, that, yeah. She's not lying. Or actually, you don't perceive that she's lying. She's very much seems truthful. Yes. Um, I'm gonna throw my arms in the air and just start walking away from her like, do you want my help? <laughs> um, okay. Um, are you guys doing anything else, actually? You guys are kind of just observing what the heck's going on here. Yeah, pretty much. I had some weird vibes going on, so. Are you still at the gate, or did you walk in? Uh, I'm, like, just inside the gate. Okay. Uh, where are you, Zozo? Uh, Zozo might have wandered in a little bit. Just, like, a little bit ahead of the gate. Okay. Kind you guys are kind of just around. trickling in. Okay. Um, as you guys are kind of Visibly confused um, as to what's going on here. Uh, she kind of speaks up. She says, oh, dear me. Uh, look at the time. I'm so sorry, uh, but I have some uh, m more chores to, to do around here. But, uh, you know, it's staying busy, busy. Uh, uh, please excuse me. And uh, she kind of bustles off and uh, goes into uh, a room and uh, kind of just leaves sight. Um, oh, you know what? Hold on. I need to share another image. Um, and from what you guys were observing, you will see this. Share. There you go. Hopefully you guys get that. If not, make sure you go to your, uh, your images. Do you guys see it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, ignore those names. You're not supposed to know that technically. <laughs> but uh, that's that's kind of like the layout of the the uh the little town that you're in. And uh, the thing next to the store between the farm and the store that's where you're kind of at. The uh the lumber yard. What's that thing in the middle? Is that like a well, or is it... You don't know yet. Oh, okay. You haven't gotten looked. Uh, it's ob it's obviously... It's flat. You know, just, okay, it looks okay. like it's just a big I just, path. I wasn't sure. Yeah, it's a top-down. You can't tell okay. the height. Yeah, it's it looks okay. like um there's a... That's like, like a big pathway circling uh, a okay. thing in the middle. But okay. there, there's no height there. What do you guys do? I'm gonna ask if we have anything to do in this town, or should we just press onwards? The person here is weird. <laughs> <laughs> she says there are people here, but I, I can't 
tell at all that there would be. It just seems very suspicious. Can Zozo go to the nearest, like the building nearest to her and just knock on the door? Uh, sure. Let me make sure I know which one you're talking about. Oh, so you just walked just into the gate. So uh, technically from the map, it'd be uh, the store. Okay. Um, so uh, you were walking towards the group and then you kind of saw a figure sc scurry off and then uh, you kind of get your attention to this, this uh, building that's right here. Um, it probably was a cute little shop at one point, uh, but it's definitely fallen into some disrepair. Uh, there's white pink flanks, uh, away from the Aspen Timbers. Um, a big sign above says Hildy's Emporium. Uh, it's scrawled, it scrawled lovingly over a low, low, do low doorway, uh, in lavender script. Uh, there's some flowery vines are painted up and down each side of the red stained door. Uh, there appears to be a shaft of an arrow or crossbow bolt protruding from the door. Um, there's a small bed of white daisies sits off to one side. Um, you knock on the door. Uh, the door kind of just opens up. Uh, Sozo looks back at the group. She plays. And goes in. Oh, you just walk in? Okay. Um, <laughs> the rest of the... Well... Sulfur, I don't know if you'd be too far away, but um, you guys can always shout. I but walking back to the group after. Okay. Um, so you guys hear the little strum of an instrument, and a hearty little halfling just walks into this uh, <laughs> dilapidated house. Um, how do you guys respond? I'm gonna run in after. <laughs> <laughs> she she's just hearty. She got no fear. I'm I'm doing a thing. I'm gonna. <laughs> try and play that same note and then walk in after. Yeah. Bling blong bling. <laughs> just... like, yeah, I did it. Look at me go. Um yeah. Uh okay. So you guys walk in. Uh the interior is uh unevenly lit from the outside windows and uh there's odd flickering of lanterns. Uh the light throws dancing shadows over shelves of canned goods and houseware. Uh there's heavy dust everywhere. Um in some places, they can make out uh, odd outlines of bare feet padding around the floor. Um, as uh, you walk further in, um, I'm assuming Zozo, you were just kind of continue walking in, seeing if you find anything. Um, behind the counter, uh, there appears to be a, a halfling woman sitting with her arms lightly folded on the countertop. Uh, she's got curly blonde hair. Uh, it's tucked under a neat white bonnet. Uh, her eyes are shut, and uh, she sits with an uh, unearthly stillness. Uh, ooh. Okay. Uh, Zozo kind of approaches her. She plays. Okay. Uh, as you appo approach, uh, her eyes flash open wildly and uh, unfocused. Uh, her, her movements are uh, herky jerky and uh, unsettling as she beckons uh, the rest of the party forward with a wave of her hand. Uh, her head bobbles slightly. Um, she uh, she says. Hi, love. Come in, come in. Welcome. Welcome to Hilly's Emporium. What a shop in the land, if I do say so myself. What can I do for you? Can you guys understand any of that, by the way? A little bit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's a, little, it's a little garbled, but yeah. All right, I might have to speak closer to the mic, but it's important. <laughs> <laughs> I got welcome. What can I do for you? Okay. Um, essentially, uh, just don't be shy. Come in. Welcome to Hilsey's Emporium, finest shop in the land. What can I do for you? Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll get closer to the mic when I have to do that. Um, as you, you guys kind of walk up, uh, most of the non-perishables have been thoroughly picked clean. Uh, the shelves boast some knickknacks, some cookware, uh, woven goods, candles, rope, oil, uh, most other basic goods found in, uh, that you would find in it like a general shop uh there are a few jars of pickled and preserved vegetables and meats left on the shelves um 
but yeah, she just kind of welcomes you forward. Are we all in here now? Yes. Uh, uh, also, she's just kind of sitting there, um, perfectly holding still with her hand out. Can I, like, approach her and be like, Excuse me, are you okay? <laughs> um... <laughs> I am lovely, my dear. How are you? Good. Just making sure you were okay. Right as rain. The, the, there's something about her that, like, Brilliant. like even look uncomfortable. Like maybe it's it's from like how still she's sitting, but like. Like, she starts to, like, tense her shoulders a little bit. Um, but I kind of, I, uh, I kind of want to roll a perception check and see if there's anything I can tell from, from her. Like, like, I don't know, So it's something about her just doesn't seem right. Sure. Uh, yeah, you, obviously looking at her, uh, you realize that, uh, she's not, uh, organic. Uh, she seems to be... Uh, uh, of a robotic nature. Oh. Hence the the jerkiness. But that is at the same time strange. seems uh, somewhat intelligent, as far as you're able to tell. The mechanics is like the furthest furthest thing that that Eva would know, so it's very perplexing. And she just kind of, like, stares. She tries not to, like, make it very overt that she's staring, but she's definitely, like, staring. Okay. I'm just gonna go up to her and be like, Do you have iron bars? <laughs> Let me see. She doesn't, uh, she, her eyes kind of flicker back and forth, but she doesn't move. Oh, I'm so sorry. Doesn't see me have any of those with us at the moment. In front of her face, like, are no. you are you alive? No response. Her, the eyes are obviously like unfocusing nice. on anything. They're they're just eyes. <laughs> just anyone home? <laughs> So just yeah, by her, I'd be able to sense that, like, she has, since I, I kind of deal with that, would I be able to sense that she kind of doesn't have, like, life to her? Yeah, um, it, it doesn't seem like a, uh, there's a natural life, like, uh... Okay, so I would, I would kind of recognize that at this point? Yeah. Okay. What brings you lovelies to Veilstone? I wish I could turn that down. That's a little too powerful. Out of character for a second. Mm -hmm. It just dawned on me. Is she made of metal? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, wait, that one, that one sounds better. We're gonna go with that. Um, it's not as harsh and annoying. Um, but yeah, it looks like she's made of metal. I'm not evil. I'm not doing oh, no. that. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you you wouldn't just have three other party members that would probably clock you over the head if you tried to do something. <laughs> I mean at this point I'm kind of creeped out. Yeah. Same yeah. actually. I mean she th this she seems uh jolly and is wanting to help. You know, she's seeing if she can offer you anything for the general store here. For a small town, this place has quite the reputation. Lovely, isn't it? A nice little slice of paradise in a sea of green. 
Eva like her, like her eye twitches slightly. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I'm talking and to a robot. Like, she's like trying to contain her expression, not just at the fact that she's talking to a robot, but like at what she's just been told, or like maybe the words that were just said. But she just looks over at like Vasha and like like gestures slightly with like her head and just sending her a look like, "What are we supposed to make of this?" Essentially. I, yeah, I kind of, like, nod back, like, it, I, I yes. This is, this is a wolf. Okay. I'm gonna ask her if there's more of her kind around. She kind of, uh, unmoving. But of course, we got a hometown here. Who built you? Built me. You can't just ask. Whatever can you mean? <laughs> You're a robot, right? You. You. Oh no. What is this? <laughs> the poor man must have been too much to drink. Thinks I'm a robot. Oh, lovely dear. No, I'm just a lovely little halfling. All right, I would love to take some rope from you, and then I think we will be on our way. Lovely, dear, lovely. How much rope would you like? Um, probably, like, uh, ten feet, maybe. Sure, sure, let me get that for you. She kind of... just kind of... Over, there's a... Obvious bit in the, the ground, there's a, a track that she can follow. And she kind of reaches up and grabs nothing. And, uh, hands you nothing. Here you go. It'll be fine, Silver. So I grab the air and I, like, slowly start, like, backing out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> I'm following that cue. <laughs> Okay, um, you guys, uh, oh, when wait, I leave, I play the instrument to tell Zozo to come, be like, no, get out of there, <laughs> strumming faster. <laughs> um, okay, um, so you, you guys don't ask anything else to this character? You just kind of split it? She's she's a little too uh, out of it. Okay. Um, I think she's human or humanoid. Okay. Um, as you uh, let's see. Oh oh oh. Okay. Um, as you're about to leave, um, she goes. Oh wait! Before you go, would you mind giving this little parcel to our friend Moira? This is this is Moira, not the player Moira. Uh, she kind of she she reaches down and grabs like a little sack and hands it to her. Or uh, holds out her hand. I'm like still kind of backing away, but I'll like grab it and be like, "Sure, we would love to. Where can we find Moira?" It's like. Oh, Moira, she's such a lovely dear. A little arm, sure. But such a dear! I can keep a secret, but such a dear. So skinny, but such a dear! Doesn't quite fit in a bit, but such a dear! And so busy, busy! Ah, look at me. I'm so emotional. Well, there's nothing else. Ah, how about you? Leave the shop. Go find her. She's around town. Lots to do. Busy, busy! Okay, great. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> nah. She kind of, as you guys all get away, you can kind of see she, and her eyes shut. So the first thing I want to do when I get outside is I want to open whatever so, this is. It's just a bunch of like nuts and bolts. Okay, great. 
I'm gonna hand them to Sulfur. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go. Oh. Sorry, I hit the tree last night. Sorry, I hit the tree last night. At least he apologized. I know. <laughs> it's okay. I understand that you were creating something. But maybe next time, there's a more gentle way to kill the tree. <laughs> I, I, I am sorry for hurting your friend. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you guys are outside of this this building. What do you What do you do? Once the store door like closes and we're kind of out of earshot. Oh, it doesn't close. Kind of oh, it doesn't close. No, not by itself. Oh well, once it once we're kind of like a little further away, she just kind of looks over and and just says, "Why do I have the feeling that something terrible happened here?" I'm going to say, tell them that, well, when I spoke to her, she said she wasn't mechanical, that she was a normal halfling. And I looked at Zozo. They don't look similar. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my point. Maybe she's not aware. But then someone made her. Well, yes, but maybe not in the sense that you're thinking. No, but th th they gave her memories and thoughts. I can't believe I'm saying this, but maybe our best chance is to find this person that she wants us to find. Does her description of Moira fit the person I met earlier? Mm -hmm. And I'll explain, I met her, she was kind of weird, she wouldn't let me help her, and then she said she, there's more people coming, and she had to be off. But she also has a saw. I mean, it's it's obviously a large saw for covering timber, she can't carry it around, it's like hooked up to the, a beam, and it's, it's, it's a, one of those saws that you just kind of, it's attached to the ropes or whatever, and you just kind of let the gravity do it. Do, is, that saw's not going anywhere. We can re I can reforge it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of something ever. better than a mace to destroy. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think we should find this person too. I feel like maybe we can get some answers about what happened here. I would like to know what happened here. It may tie into whatever we're looking for. If it's a something that we're looking for, I'm I'm not even sure at this point. Uh, Zozo, you were playing some tunes. Uh, mm. Were you trying to convey something? Uh, yeah, so when... Uh... When he said that we don't look alike, there's something weird with her she played. Oh, okay. It's like, yes, I'm freaked out. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Um, so you guys have this little discussion here. Uh, you're, you're technically still outside the, uh, the, the store. Um, what do you do? There, there's lots of areas to go here. Are any of you less clunky people good at searching? Less clunky. <laughs> so that we could be like a, an investigation. Or uh, they don't have search anymore. Um, essentially, you're like looking for tracks or anything? You know, I, I'm kind of bulky and stick out like a sore thumb, so... Also, out of game context right here. Um, 
I thought this this was a whole situation was going to or this scenario was going to be done in one session. It might not be. Is there any time that anyone has to jut out? Um, I'm good for like another hour or so. Cuz I don't want to put anyone in a a bind. We're good for another hour or so and then we can check in again. How are you feeling? Yep. Sounds okay. good. All right. And also if something like comes up or you know, we lose track of time. Feel free to speak up and say, "Hey, I need to end here soon." Um, okay, so I'll keep an eye on the time here. Um, Pat. I am. Um, okay, so you guys are just outside the inn. Um, you haven't really explored anything further beyond the lumber yard and obviously this inn. Uh, where do you guys head off to? So we're gonna check out the inn. The yeah, inn? Because okay. that's the largest building, so I think that would be a draw. And usually the inn is, is where people will go typically as well. Okay. Uh you guys wanna go check out the inn? Yes. Um yeah, I'm down. You all kinda start heading over uh to the larger of the buildings that you see here. Um it's a Obviously, it's larger than the other buildings, but it's a small Tudor-style uh, building with uh, timber-reinforced white plastered walls. Um, as you kind of, uh, you can tell, there's a, a, a single room, um, probably upstairs. Uh, the, the roof seems like it's been uh, badly burned and is uh, missing in some places. Um, there's three flower beds uh, right, out fr right out front uh, of white daisies. Um, you get, you approach the door and same as the, uh, the store the door kind of creaks open and, uh, you, you, I don't know, you can enter there. Um, uh, but the, as you, you kind of peer into the door, uh, the tavern, obviously it's, uh, predictably empty. Um, dust covers every surface, uh, of what might be in a cozy, uh, welcoming inn at some point. Um, the bar, there's a, the bar in a, a far right corner, um, has a several, several dusk, ooh, sorry, several, uh, dusk coated tankards, uh, the insides, uh, actually you guys don't know that yet. Um, but yeah, so that is what you can see from the outside. Okay. I guess we should go in. <laughs> Kind of just eerily will, creep in. Yeah, I, I will stay after they all go in. I'll enter last and stand by the door to watch. Make sure no one else is coming inside. Okay. Um, as you take a couple steps in, um, Vasha, you uh, notice at your feet there's um, uh, there's a layer of dust, obviously, on the ground, um, but you can see bare footprints. Okay. Obviously, uh, in the dust. Um, Can I uh, follow the footsteps? Do I need to roll something for that? Or no, um, they're obviously okay. uh, like in kind of a pattern. Um, okay. But but you do notice in the distance there is a large figure uh, at the bar, and he's kind of hunched over. Um, you kind of you can approach the bar, and you see the inside of the tankards are caked with dried residue and solids of what would have been some kind of long gone beer and ale that has gone stale. Um, but the heavy layer, layer of dust that you saw on the floor um, is patterned by chaotic footprints um, that seems to divide the room into quarters. Uh, beams of sunlight burst in from the ceiling, especially where the, the roof has been burned or fallen apart. Um, illuminates motes of dust and debris in the path. Um, as you walk further in, the, the tavern springs to life. Uh, a mechanical fiddler starts uh, fiddling away on a, his, uh, I guess, fiddle. Uh, and he grinds and jerks action, crudely mimicking the motions of a violinist. Um, 
mildly discordant music emanates from the crate upon which he sits. Um, obviously, the person uh, didn't know how to tune an instrument well. Um, as you continue to walk for further in, um, you hear a cheery, directionless voice of a young woman merrily uh, rings across the tavern. Greetings! Whoa, that hurt my ears. That was very loud. Um, I'm going to turn myself down. Greetings, and welcome to Heart Spring. The de delicate and beautifully detailed figure of a young woman waves at you. Um, a very warm and welcoming smile uh, forever painted on her face. Uh, her eyes are immaculately painted, um, shimmering with the brightest of blue flecks of silver embedded. Um, she has a white lace blouse, uh, boasts a prominent brownish red stain on the front and back. Uh, she wears a heavy locket with a keyhole around her neck. I'm get, oh, that stain worries me a little. Um, she sees uh, you guys kind of standing there. She says, um, I'm Mirabelle. I gotta remember to turn that down because, oh my god, that hurts my ears. I'm Mirabelle. Have a seat at the bar, please. I will approach the bar and sit down. Okay. And I kind of look back at Eva and Dozo and you're just kind of hoping for the best <laughs> I, I, I follow but know. reluctantly <laughs> reluctantly <laughs> okay um making sure the things are good here na, 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 na. Uh oh I'm quite again. There it goes. There is. Why can't I share this image? Like that. Um. Just do it this way. Lock. Share. Share. All right, you guys can see that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can make it bigger too. Uh, if you go on the bottom right, um, you have to get like pixel perfect, but then arrows will show up. And if you right click on it, you can click view and make it fit. It's a little bit easier to use. Um, you zoom to fit. There we go. Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, this is going to be goofy because apparently things didn't get saved or something. Um, but so you went and took a spot at the bar. Um, as you take a s one of the spots at the bar, um, there is a hulking figure right next to you. Um, he's leaning over a long, empty tankard of uh, ale. Uh, he's got massive shoulders and a broad back uh, that are held in place by uh, marionette strings. Uh, and uh, as you take notice of the, the, the barmaid, you also, no also notice that she also has similar strings. Um, the light from the uh, caved-in roof has illuminated this. Um, but uh, this figure has uh, some heavy metal struts and hoses. Um, it creaks and hums from within, uh, like it's almost breathing. Um, he's got a shiny bald head with a painted-on heavy mustache. And uh, he, he gapes lifelessly at, at its drink. Uh, it appears to be intentionally crafted to look cruel and is sporting a commoner's tunic, a pair of simple breeches, uh, heavy boots, and uh, it, it kind of grinds to life. And uh, it says... Uh, uh, Fergus. I should give it a different voice. Uh, Fergus. 
Argus. There should not be an echo, but good enough. You guys respond to anything that's happening right there? So we all see that they're connected to strings? Um, yeah, uh, like marionette strings, yeah. And it just connected to the ceiling, or can we look up and see, like, where... Do we see where they end? Um, you, yeah, you just see them going straight into the ceiling. You don't see where uh, they're going exactly. Oh, okay. Can... Oh. Can Zozo approach the fiddler? Um, sure. Um, sorry, my, uh, why is this acting goofy? Uh, what do I, I'll figure that out in a second. Um, but you want to approach the, uh, the fiddler? Sure. Yes. Um, okay, from, uh, wait, um, uh, okay, so you approach him, uh, what do you do? Uh, she wants to attempt to take his his fiddle so she can tune it. Okay. Um, he obviously doesn't respond, but he's sitting there. Or, well, I guess it's a violin, so he's sitting there, jerkily playing it. Uh, but as you get uh, closer to him to see if you can uh, try to help tune the instrument, you realize it's not really an instrument itself. Um the sound is coming from underneath him in the crate that he's sitting on. There's like a speaker built into it, and his thing is just not moving. Or it looks like he's playing a violin, but it's not even a real instrument. Can she investigate the crate? See if uh, there's, or how it works, or try to figure out if there's a way to to make it better? <laughs> <laughs> um. Sure, you can do you can do a an investigation. Oof. Um Yeah, you don't see anything. <laughs> she kicks the crate and walks over the bar. Screw again. this thing and <laughs> goes and sits at the bar again. Okay. Um Anyone else do anything? Uh, can I check out the footprints? Sure. What do you want to check out? So are like are they human or how big are they? Uh... Yeah, they're they're elvish. Um, they're obviously barefoot, and uh, they're just kind of running up and down that area. Actually, can you guys see what I've shared? You guys have anything? Uh, yeah. when, oh, when you know what? It went black. Yeah, yeah, it, it went, went black. black. Hold on, I gotta drag you guys on. Hold on. Whoa, why are you tiny? Also, this... The fact that it didn't save... My thing here is... Upsetting. Oh, I know why. Because, damn it. During the test stuff we were doing... I forgot if you remove stuff, things break. Okay. You guys see the... Okay. I see three of you see it. One of you does not. I have just the black thing. Yeah, I still only see the dark screen, the grid. Okay. Me as well. Okay. Um, that means I just got to add you guys so you guys can see it. Okay. Uh, okay. Dozo, Eva, Vasha, Sulfur. Okay. You, can you guys see now? Oh, yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Um, okay. That is what I needed. Okay. Um, you guys can see the, the figure there, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. 
so this is kind of like you guys can move your characters wherever um you're you were supposed to go or you anticipate where your character's at so uh, i just realized there you go <laughs> oh yeah i gotta i gotta approve this crap manually boo all right <laughs> Right. Oh, that's crazy. It shows everyone uh, where someone's trying to move. Yoink, 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 yoink. Okay. So that's where everyone's at? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, so you, you, there's three, obviously, marionettes in here. Or, well, there's four. There's the, that, the fiddler. Um, there's also one guy behind the bar. Uh, he's a it's a thin male figure with a dark slicks back hair and a pinstriped apron uh, bobbles on his head in your direct uh, he he'll bobbles in your head in your direction in a in, and in a haughty tone you hear uh, damn it there's too many buttons I have to do voices um he says uh, what can I get for you. Just so you know, the drinks are free, even if you lived here your whole life. Please don't take apart anything or build anything cool in my fancy tables. You should always wear shoes. Just leave the money on the counter. Thank you. Lots to do. Busy, busy. Uh, I just meant to move the map around. I didn't mean to move that 20 feet. Oh, let me fix that. No, you're not allowed to move. <laughs> um, the, uh, the female figure from behind the bar says, uh, I love Burgess, even though he smells bad and he's ugly and mean and stupid. The whole I think of it, Burgess. <laughs> To the, see if he reacts to that. The hulking figure says, uh, I'm Fergus. I'm a big dumb idiot and I hit people and drink too much. The lady figure says, uh, Moira is nice and smart and probably really fun to be around if I just get to know her a little bit better. But I'm always so busy, busy. Isn't my breath just the worst? I bet I'm the ugliest idiot in town. I can't hold a decent conversation, but I'm big and mean. Something is definitely not right here. My father is a mean old jerk and tells everyone to leave his daughter alone. I'm a diarrhea baby moron. Get out of my way. I'm too busy for you. Busy, busy. I'm gonna turn, <laughs> try to make a joke and be like, looks like they're too busy busy for us. <laughs> what, uh, is this entire town like this? Are you guys saying this stuff out loud, by the way? Oh, yeah. Okay. Very well for me quietly, but the this is just very unsettling. I want to tr try something weird. Okay. <laughs> so yes, I I do wish to move that twenty five. Oh yeah. Uh um Okay. Um as you as you approach the figure, um hmm. you you notice there's a uh there's a key hanging around his uh his neck.
This is Fergus, right? Mm-hmm. I want to reach out and try and cast Mending on him. See if I can try and alter? Maybe some of his, like, programming's messed up or something. Um. Okay. Go ahead and uh, reach out and try to cast Mending on him. Yeah, it's just the cantrip. Oh, yeah, that's a cantrip. Uh, um, yeah. you see, some of the the more rusted uh, pieces of his his um, metal and stuff seems to flake off and uh, become whole again. Um, but other than that, you don't notice any cr- kind of tra- crazy changes. That key does it look like it goes to the one around the other person's neck? Possibly. I've reached for it. Or oh, sorry, it's not around his neck. Oh, I apologize. Um, you, as you got closer, you see uh, it's in uh, his his palm, like he's holding oh. it. I'll ask him. What's that key for? Why are you holding it? I'm a big dummy poopy head that has the key to Mira's heart. It doesn't sound like she likes you, though. Uh. Well, wait. Uh, I said Mira, not Moira. Yeah, Mira. She's the one that called him Tinky or something, right? That. Uh, she she said that she smells bad and yes. isn't ugly and mean and stupid. Yeah, so why would he have the key to her heart? That's what I'm wondering. She, it sounds like she doesn't like him. I'm big. At this point, I'm going to turn to Sulfur and say, um, I think he's auto-programmed. I don't think you're going to be able to talk to him. Farmer Brooke promised me we'd be married. Oh, it sounds like another lava arrangement. So I'll reach out and grab the key. You're going to try to grab the key from his hand? Yep. Okay. Um, oh, wait, you, you moved that. There you go. Sorry. Um, as you uh, go to grab the key from his hand... Uh, he lets uh, he lets loose a roar of anger, and uh, you are gonna you're all gonna roll for initiative. Oh, there we go. Um, all right, you guys ready for your first combat? Uh, yeah. All right, hold on. Everyone's rolled. Okay. Um, wait. It's initiative, or it's initiative time. We need to get a battle music. Oh my gosh, we finally made it to a battle. <laughs> I think it's this. That's all. Also, if, if, oh. if you heard the cat meow or purring, just let me know. Oh, no, you're fine. Uh, Sounds like the opposite of a problem. Oh, he's, he's out now. Like, out. Yeah, tunes that you guys can't hear. But it fits. <laughs> Battle time! Uh, where's initiative? Um, what'd you say? Where's initiative? Uh, I already, I, it auto-rolled. Oh! Um, if you, if you open up the combat tracker, it'll show you, uh, the order. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because some of them showed up in chat. Got it. There you go. Okay, now you guys can, you should be able to see it. Um, so, Eva, it's your go. No, it's. I mean, I guess it's really not too early to like actually get into it. Into it. Um, I suppose I'm gonna start by going that way. This doesn't seem like it's gonna go well. He sounds angry. Yeah, he's not too happy. 
then in the process of moving towards, um, I very, not angrily, but uh, like the, I'm not mad, just disappointed. <laughs> why'd you have, why'd you have to reach for the thing? <laughs> <laughs> just staring at him. How dare you? <laughs> so why'd you have to reach for the thing? They saved Zozo from a marriage. Gotta do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not, okay. you're really not wrong though. Now what? Uh, you still yeah, have actions and stuff, so. Thing. I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Can't. I can start learning how to do that. Maybe. Maybe. Unless it won't let me. Depends. Oh, it won't let me anymore because it, it. I guess it auto clicked the button for me. Uh, what'd you try to do? Uh, I do not have actions left because it auto. I guess it must have gone to end of turn after I moved. I don't know. Oh, yeah, something weird happened. There. Oh, there we go. Okay, watch it work now. There we go. Oh snap! We got a brown bear. The big angie boy. Herb. Is yeah. not gonna slap anyone today. Um. So your bo a bonus action is to transform. Uh, so you can still attack. If you so desire. Yes, you, I guess it's just a... Uh... You get one bite attack and one claw attack. And are those under other? Because they're not under main on the bear character so, sheet, I guess. So under, if you scroll down, it's in main. If you scroll down to actions, there should be a, a bite and a claw. Do you see it? There we go. Okay, yep, got it. And you just, yeah, just drag the attack. Uh, you gotta drag it on him, but that would have missed. Oh, on him, okay. I think. Let me see. Uh, yeah, that would have missed. Uh, but you still get a claw attack. We'll try. Let's get on to that dude. Oh. He disappeared. Oh. You just killed him. Good job. <laughs> Whoa, where'd he go? There, he's back. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. What happened? I don't know. I dragged the dice onto him, and then, like, two seconds later, he just went poof. Please tell me that you guys don't have option to control. That'd be, that'd be an annoying change. Okay, try it again. See what happened. Okay. Oh, well, that time it worked. Okay. Oh. Natural oh. 20. Okay. <laughs> um. So now you just drag your attack. Or your damage onto him. Uh, so that's where it says hit, right? Uh, no, that's the attack. The uh, it says DMG. Oh wait, sorry. In your uh, you're looking. I was looking at the combat tracker. Your stuff shows up there too. Um, uh, the yeah, it'll the two d six plus four slashing damage. Yeah, drag that onto his face. Okay. Wow, that's gonna be a lot of damage. Oink. Wow. All right, get some damagi. All right, that's your turn. All right, cool. So this time it should actually be my power to do that. There we go. Zozo, you're up. <laughs> okay, so this guy's tall, right? Yeah, he's large. He's quite big. So Zozo wanted to try and cut the string or one of the strings. Could she try to climb on the bar and... Hmm. Does that make sense? Let's see. Sure. Go ahead and try to attack the supports. Should I roll anything special for that or just like... A... Um, roll... I guess what are you going to attack it with is the first question. Uh, probably the, a dagger. Okay. Um, first, actually, let's uh, roll a perception to see if you can okay. find anything uh, like a weak spot or something. Okay. Uh, onto the character or into the chat? Into the chat. Okay. Oof. Set. Okay. So, yeah, you see no visible uh, weak spots that you could actually attack to try to uh, disable the supports or anything. All right, there. Um, I 
But yeah, she still has action. Yeah, you still have an action because you, you were just kind of looking around. Okay. So then she'll probably just try to attack normally. Okay. Uh, are you going to use any of your your spells or anything, or are you actually going to try to do a stab? I don't... I'm worried about trying to use a spell because I don't know how it's going to affect... Oh, I should also say, so the bear did damage, right? Um, but Ferga, or the big automaton looks like it didn't even bother him. Like, he obviously took damage, but he just kind of... He took a crit to the face, and it, like, didn't didn't phase him at all. Oh yeah, your your spells would be difficult to do, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Um Dissonant Whispers does damage. But that is a... That's a, that's a level one spell that you could upcast, apparently. Are we losing her? She's yeah, a. Looks she's like a, yep. Hold on, it's lost. You're uh. You're like freezing out on us. We might have lost her. That would be unfortunate. Okay, we hear you again, but your cam seems... Oh, there oh, you're back. You're back, good. Okay, sorry. No, you're fine. Things happen. Uh... But yeah, I think she'll... I'll try to... Isn't it whispers? Whispers, then. Okay, so first drag the wisdom save from it on top of his model. So, drag... Oh my god. For the save, right? Yep. Save. Uh, save over to the guy? Yep. Um. Hold on a minute. Oh, okay, so that was his save. Uh, he passed. Okay. Unfortunately. Um. And that was your level one spell slot? Yes. Okay. Um, so that is marked. Um, unfortunately, you missed. Uh, he rolled a 19. And he needed a 10. Oh, man. That feels really low. Why does that feel so low? But he does take half damage, though, from it still. Uh, does he? Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, so it's 1d6? Or 3d6 divided by 2. Okay. So... Go ahead and grab 3d6 and roll them into the chat and I'll just manually add it to the damage. Oops. Um, remember, if you right click, you can do all th or you can add multiple at once. Uh... Also, it's pretty good damage numbers. I don't like that the uh, the music didn't loop. There we go. 
Okay, so you did six and or six, five, and four. Dang. Yeah, you rolled almost the max. Eleven. You did fifteen damage, so I'm gonna he took seven more. So, okay. Boom. He took some damage. Cool. Uh is that that's your turn because you've moved. Or actually you didn't move yet, huh? Um, if you move, though, you would take an attack of opportunity. Um, otherwise, go ahead and uh, pass your turn, and it'll be Sulphur's turn. All right. I'm going to bang on my shield and taunt him. And the first thing I'm going to do is cast Shield of Faith. Okie dokie. Sick. You and your asshole stupid amount of AC. So I'm at 21 AC right now. How come it only shows 19? Uh shield of faith. Hold on. How come um it's not showing up for you. There. I, can put it I did. In the miscellaneous. I did it. Um, <laughs> you, you needed to drag it onto your, your character like you cast it. Um, Ooh, but okay. now you are sitting at 21 AC, so to you. Um, and I still have my action because that's a bonus action. Mm -hmm. And I will cast... Uh, uh, my word of radiance. Okie dokie. So I, sorry, I just drag it onto him. Uh, the whatever it is to hit, yes. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, he saved. Okay, Barely. So nothing then. Yep. Uh, so there's no half damage? Right? Oh, uh, also, it shouldn't be con save. Yes, it is a con save, but that's not my DC save. Uh, plus six isn't your DC save? Oh, you see it as yeah. plus six? Mm -hmm. So, 14 total, right? Uh, no, you rolled a six and you got a plus six. Right? No, it should be saved against my DC, which is eight plus three plus five, so it should be DC thirteen. Okay, uh, what'd you cast? Word of Radiance. Word of Radiance. Where is that? Word of Radiance. Okay, let me look. Boink. Is your DC not set up properly? Um, let's see. So it should be eight plus your ability modifier, right? Three. Proficiency 2. 11, 12, 13. Right. So why... Uh... Maybe I'm reading this backwards. Because it says he succeeded. It says your DC is... 10. Oh, your thing is toggling. How come it was 10? Now it's 13. Okay, I'm gonna... Hold on. I'm gonna check Zozo to make sure that her cast was right in the first place. Um, wisdom. DC. Okay, yeah. So hers was right. Um, yours, for some reason, was set to 10. So he failed then by one. That's <laughs> sweet. So then I will reroll that damage. Sure. And just drag the damage onto him and he'll just do it. Yeah. Sweet. And that's the damage it would do, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
Let's freak you, dude. Welcome to the new blood. <laughs> What's up, Serial? Thanks for popping in, man. Yeah, we got new players here. Um, okay, so you did your damage. You did your bonus action. Yep, and I'm gonna stand perfectly here, so. Bash's turn. Alright, I'm gonna first move. Which you can do totally safely. Yeah. Um to there. Mm -hmm. Um, and I am going to try and cast command on him to drop the key out of his hand. Let me look up command. Because no wisdom save. So I know that, but he's not a person. He's not a creature. Uh oh. So I don't know if it would work. Yeah, he's not a creature. Okay. So I, I won't let you waste a spell slot on a not a creature. Okay. Okay. So I have no idea what he is. Uh, he's a large robot. <laughs> um, okay. Well. You okay, potato? Um. Can I search him for a weak spot? Then? Uh, like you want to perceive or like see if you can see anything yeah uh you can try although you're in the middle of combat and technically stuff is swinging around right now okay uh, i would have to tackle some people to even get close to him um I'll change my plan then. Um, because I can't really do much because he's not a creature. So, um. No problem, Sloth. I guess. I will. You could always delay your turn too, or after him, if you want. Yeah, because I I can't do anything because all my spells have to be cast on creatures. So. Okay. Uh, you want to just sit then. Delay your turn then. Yep. Okay. We'll keep the initiative order, but uh, you'll go after him then. Okay. Um, he angrily roars in your faces and smacks. At Sulfur, who's directly in front of him twice. Smack. Bring it. He missed. Next attack. He miss again. Wait a minute. He rolled a. It says twenty-two. I don't see any numbers. I just see attack at. Yeah, you guys don't see it. Ah. I think the calculations are broken. Well, that one obviously hit. Unless your effect does something else that we don't know about. No, it you're... only raises my AC by two. Yeah. What the heck? If he ro he rolled a twenty-two, it even says twenty-two. Okay. I just roll the damage. Then. Yeah, I'm just gonna roll the damage. All right. So something is weird. Um, with the damage, so we we're just gonna have to keep an eye on what's actually happening. Um, here you go, and roll on. You. And you oh, it automatically does the concentration check. Yep. Beautiful. Isn't that cool? Okay, oh, so because I was getting ready to roll it. Yeah, you uh, you you pass concentration. Um, you took the damage. 
Oh, that's right, because uh, your concentration is your spell. Yep. Um, hold my plan. Reading up on his thing. Um, it didn't make you roll a strength check, though. Uh, go ahead and roll a strength check. Just strength check or strength say uh, this is the same thing for me, actually. Yeah, same thing. Oh, yeah. fucking, there's your 20. Yeah, you pass it. Um, okay, um, so that's his turn. And next round, it's Moira's turn. Hopefully they are back. He, yeah, so Sick. he's pretty fixed on, on sulfur at the moment, right? Um, so far, it seems that way, yeah. Okay, um, I think going with that, I might just take the chance to maybe keep messing with them a little. Or maybe not, because yeah, I don't that's know a miss. that roll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do I still have the double attack for the claws too, or is it just the one if yeah, I Yeah, you, uh, you always get a bite and a claw. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's try that again, sir. That's not too bad. There you go. Got him. Cool beans. Okay, we'll try that again. Nice. Some damage has been done. Bonk bonk is all I'm going to say to that. <laughs> Zozo! Also, perfect timing. Welcome back. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I have motorcycles having fun outside my window. Oh, you're fine. Uh, I have like seven windows, but I didn't even see that. <laughs> uh, but I'll try, Zozo will try Dissonant Whispers again. Okay. And it has a verbal component, so I forgot to add that last turn. She strums a little. Okay. Trying his racket's mechanical components. Oh god, yeah, that's totally made it. Um and... two and three. Um oh, so in that situation, uh we'll we'll keep your numbers because they were good rolls. Um, but in that situation, um, you can actually drag the damage from your spell just directly onto his face. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but we'll just keep it, so... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 damage! Also, since he took the full thing, he has to move his speed away from you. So... Um, and so he literally ran through everyone, and you all can get an attack of opportunity. Oh, wait a minute. How do I say? Oh, there it goes. Okay, so you guys saw a move. Cool. So um, we'll just go down the list. Uh, Eva, go ahead and do an attack of opportunity if you so desire. Remember, it will so use your bonus regular... action, or your reaction, and you only get one. Okay, uh, so it's just a regular attack roll, right? Yeah, choose to bite or claw. Uh, the claw's been going pretty good recently. He's kind of off screen for me almost, so I'm gonna do my best to land it on him here. Okay, that worked good. And you hit. Cool. Uh, let's see, let's see if this... Right on the nice edge. move, Sloth. You just caused a crap ton of damage just to go through for no reason. That did not work. Okay, hold on. There we go. All right, damage has been done. All right. Uh, Zozo, if you want to do an attack of opportunity with your daggers... Uh, actually, wait, you have your loot out, huh? Or your ukulele. You wouldn't be able to switch to your daggers in time. Unless you wanted to smack him with your ukulele, but then you'd probably break it. Did we lose her again? Kind of seems frozen. 
Here she goes. Actually, we don't need to go in crazy turns for the uh, attack of opportunities. You guys can just roll it, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so go ahead and do uh, your attack of opportunity first if you want. Sulfur. Nice roll. You definitely hit. And did damage. Nice. All right, so now you'll have to move your character through. Go get him if you want. Uh, is, oh, it's actually my turn. Yep. Um, yeah, it is. We'll just have, we'll do the attack of opportunities on people's turns because sometimes the game freaks out. It says, it's not your turn. You can't do it. Um, did it seem like my attack of opportunity transferred all its damage? Uh, yes. You know what? Why risk it? For the biscuit? I'll cast, uh, Inflict Wounds. Missed. 17 shit. Um, so that's your turn? Yeah. Okay, you're marking off your spell slots, right? I've Both of you? Two. Cool. Uh, Vash's turn then? Oh, yes, I need to pass it. I need to pass it. Sweet. Uh, go ahead and use uh, your attack of opportunity if you want, Basha. Oh, boy. Critical miss. Oh, wait. Did you roll a one? Oh, you rolled your damage. You want to roll a d20. No, you didn't. You rolled a one. No, yeah, the, 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 the d20. Okay, yeah, you rolled a one. Um... I'm just gonna there was nothing crazy happened because that would happen on the same turn so as he's running by um what would happen so jump or sulfur was there that was right between the bear and dozo yep so um vasha make a attack roll on josh or uh sulfur if you hit him. He probably won't. He's got stupid AC. Okay, yeah, you definitely missed. Okay. So that was your attack of opportunity. Now you can do your turn. Okay. Um... Well? Um... Who's... Who goes after me? Uh, uh, Fergus. Okay. Josh is at like half life, by the way. Is he? Mm -hmm. Oh, he is. Okay. Um, I will go ahead and heal Josh then. What a kind soul. I know, right? <laughs> um. Okay, I'm gonna cast. Her of healing. Prayer of healing is a 10 minute cast time, though. Oh, yeah. Oh. Never mind then. So we'll undo that. <laughs> undo that. Uh, we will do. Uh. My only other healer now, which is eight. You have to cure your wounds, right? Mm-mm. Oh, I thought you did. Nope. Okie dokie. Uh, is that a um, touch one? Is aid touch? If so, you have to walk up next to him. Is not. It's a 30-foot range. Okay. It's a ranged attack. Or... Oh. Sorry, I was putting you guys on the squares. Okay, so we got five temporary hit points. Nice. Um, and it also increases your current hit points by five as well. Oh, does it? Yes. 
Oh, and so it hits up to three people. Holy shit. Yeah. Um. Wink. Never had aid used before, so. <gasps> Small little Each small. hit points. Yeah. Okay, so your temporary hit points are your maximum <gasps> goes up by five. Yeah. Target's hit points maximum and current hit points. So. Oh my God! How do we do temporary hit points? Or, um, well, I mean that, but your temporary max hit points goes up. Or your max hit points temporarily goes up. How do you do that? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to heal you for five then. So I don't have to do that math. Or so we don't actually break everyone's life. Um, so no one else tem technically gets healed, but you can choose your other two people or friends and give them temporary hit points. Sure. Um, yeah, I'll give them to the other two then, too. Sweet. Oh. Uh, did you want to move at all? Um. I, I think I'm going to move, uh, over this way. Like here. Sure. And then I will end my turn. Nice. Let's see. Okay, uh, Fergus, I've been taking some damage. It's going to use its action. You can see, like, he kind of hunkers down. And uh, some, some sparks and uh, jolts of lightning start flicking around inside of him. Um, and you can see some of the damage he's taken starts to slowly repair itself. Uh, so he's going to repair himself or... And this AC goes up until the start of the next turn. All right, bear turn. Bear time. Bear time. <laughs> uh, I guess. Oh, wow. Okay. Move a little, a little closer. This car. Mm. I know how to turn that now, yes. <laughs> Are you within range? You might have to scooch. Because you're on like the corner of this area. You might have to go here to hit him, but you had enough movement. Um oh, you missed. Missed. Uh, you do have another attack though. Let's try again. Miss. Fired a mist again. Fired a mist. <laughs> uh, that is it then. It's Ozo's turn. Oh, is she frozen again? I think we will. Oh, she froze as soon as her turn came. <laughs> You back? Oh, you're back. Oh darn. You're good. Uh, is she within 60? Oh yeah. Yeah, you're within 60 feet. Oh, you are breaking up. Okay. Maps. 
hello, hello. Okay. We're hearing a little bit. We heard you cast something. We don't know what you did, though. But you can do it in the game, and we'll see what you did. Okay. More dissonant whispers. Uh, there it goes. Did that hit? Oh, yeah, you succeeded. Holy crap. And his wisdom sucks. I guess he is a robot. Um, go ahead and do your damage. Alright. Image has been done. Oh wait, he, he did succeed it. Okay. Okay. It's doing it right. Never mind. Um, and he is farthest away from you that uh, I guess he could technically go farther from you, couldn't he? Does he have to move the max distance? Let's see. Immediately use its reaction to move as far as its speed allows from you. Okay, well, it's going to use its action, or its reaction, to move as far as it can away. How come? Then it goes this way. Yoink. Okay. Um, so, Eva and Sulfur, you also get an attack of opportunity again. Sounds like fun. I can Sloth just doing control of the battlefield, giving free attacks to everyone. I mean, it comes in hand. Oh, you. Wow. I Barely hit. <laughs> nope. And, yeah. So, Eva missed. Sulfur hit. Wrong boy. Damage been taken. Alright, so that... Zozo, that was your turn, yes? Yes. Oh. Uh... We do this, and we say, you know what? Getting real sick and tired of you. Wound at second level. Oof. Rip. Fs. Fs yep. in chat. Second level spell slot down the drain. Oof. Um. Vash's turn? Yes. Uh. -uh. My map keeps moving. Um, I am going to move. Eva. I'm just a bear. Huh? I'm just a <laughs> bear. <laughs> um. And then.
I will... Gonna hang out? Alright. Yep. Um he's gonna swing and a miss. He's gonna swing. Right, you better miss. And he critical missed. How am I gonna critical miss? Oh. Okay. So he swings at Sulfur and he swings wildly that he misses and he hits the rafters above him. Let's do some damage. Oh yeah, he does plenty of damage. That he actually uh, puts a hole into his supports above it, exposing some wires. And uh, that is his turn. Bear's turn. I don't think I can do much about the wires. Unless bears are really tall, which I don't think brown bears are the tall ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might not be able to reach him with your bitey parts or claws. Yeah, so I, <laughs> I don't even think I can fact check myself. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll go with a stippy steppy. And I'm going to try to chomp yep that hits that's the first hit of the night wow okay i'll take it Humph. <laughs> okay that's not terrible and then a claw that you just switched that time <laughs> yeah yep that time switched <laughs> All right, and then there we go. Zozo's turn. Okay. Uh... Can you move 35 feet? I thought you had tiny legs. I don't know. Uh, you oh, you can move 25 feet. <laughs> Hold on. Where is her movement again? Yep, you can move 25. You got little legs! There you go. Perfect. Little Zozo. Mm Can she use perception, like on the wires, to see if there is a way where she could, like, climb up? Um, you might be too short, unless you mm -hmm. found a. St I don't. I will. I'll say those stools aren't bolted down. <laughs> but uh, you won't have to perceive. You obviously there's exposed wires and stuff. Now he he put a okay. hole in the okay. roof. Um, so yeah. that obviously could be you know, tampered with. But in, in terms of your melee range, it's probably too high if the bear can't reach it. <gasps> Acrobatics off the bear! I would be lying if I said I didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> or one of you with your really high strength just throw her up there. Toss me. No one tosses a dwarf. <laughs> I mean, my strength in bear form is a 19, so <laughs> <laughs> if someone wants to get yeeted by a pair of big fuzzy paws, let me know. Bear yeet. <laughs> this is why I need to have, like, artists so they could draw that. Bear yeet. Just Zozo, just like, flying. Face all pushed back from wind. Oh, um... 
Yeah, so I don't... What are you going to try to do, Zozo? I don't know yet. Um... So we... Here. I mean, you guys have the option to always delay your turn. It just puts you at the end. So if you want to wait, you can wait for stuff to happen, but you don't really have any support spells yet. So, I don't know. Sulfur's turn. All right. Um... Really don't want to risk it again. Or he's gonna smack him. You'll smack him? Miss. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I forgot to. No, that's a hit. I forgot to modify his, put his AC back after his turn. And took some damage. Okay. Um, that's all I got. Bash's turn. Okay. Do I want to get yeeted by the bear? Are you really? Uh, I'm thinking about <laughs> it. I thought about that before I even said anything, and then I was like, okay, maybe I'm not crazy. Um... Hmm. How tall are the, like, how high up are the wires? Um, so they're about a standard ceiling. So, what, 12 feet in the air? Okay. And then you got to reach up a little further because they're beyond the ceiling. Okay. Um, I am going to move <laughs> on top <laughs> of Eva. This is excellent. <laughs> Instructions unclear, got on bear. <laughs> <laughs> Stands on top of bear. <laughs> oh, right. I gotta. Okay. Um. Mush! The... Just... <laughs> yeah, can I try to like jump on up onto the. Well, he hit the area that's like just under the footprints because that's where the rafters are or the uh, the support beams are. He's he's like on rails, right? Okay. So Eva would have to move over there. Oh. But I like where this is going. This makes me laugh. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bear rider. <laughs> um. And you still have your action. Yeah. Well, since I. I can't get there yet. I am going to, um, going to Shield of Faith, um, my brown bear friend. Okie dokie. Uh, you should be able to just drag the effect onto her. Yeah, I gotta get If you put that on me, you'd watch me get some cry inside more. No, you can't stack it. <laughs> it doesn't stack? No, it doesn't stack. Same effects don't stack. No, I don't want it on me. Um, I you can- move. I think you can just drag it onto her in the care combat oh, tracker, too. Okay, yeah. okay. I'll do that instead, then. Perfect. Okay, did that work? I think it's yes, still it did. On. Oh my god. Okay. So much AC. Cool. <laughs> Battle there. <laughs> get him. Uh, Sick him. <laughs> just gonna hold my mace up and get ready. <laughs> uh, is shield of face a bonus action or is that a full action? It's a bonus. Okay, so you still have an action. I'm good. I'm just gonna hold my mace up and get ready. Get ready. Uh, you're within range. You could try to smack at him if you want. Okay. 
I'll smack at him. Why not? Oh, uh, well, I don't want to piss him off. Uh, roll at disadvantage, though, because you're riding a bear. Okay. Is there a way to add disadvantage or just do it twice? Uh. Actually, yeah, just roll 2d20 just normally, okay. and then we'll figure it out from there. Okay, that's probably a miss. Yeah. That's oh, even a worse miss. Even lower. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, so you miss. <laughs> But your bear friend is glowing and uh, seems to be happy. Um, okay. He is going to take a swing. I mean, he's been trying to smack sulfur this whole time. Bonk, bring it. Come on. Miss. Doesn't even matter. He'd be missing anyone right now with his rolls of fours and twos. Okay. Uh, that definitely hit. Bonk. You roll a 20 on your concentration. Um, roll a strength check. Or save. Same die either way. Oh no. Oh. Yeah, you fail. You are now prone. Uh, it's yeah, it's not like you need to be standing for armor. All right, it's a bear's turn. All right, I'm trying to see if I have a speed 40 feet. Okay, cool. Yep. Uh, I still don't know if that's going to get me within range. Ah, uh, well, I can't like go this way. I have to go around, right? You can't go through him, yeah. Okay. And if you uh, run through friendlies, it's counted as a double, or it takes double the speed. But if you're trying to move up to those little bits where Zozo are and stuff, you can I'm make that. I'm trying to get, like, yeah, over here. Yeah. So oh, I think I should be able to make that, right? I'm not seeing go. where you're trying to move. Well, they cross over the mid, like, the, ra the rafters, they cross in the middle. Yep. Is that so I'm trying saying? to essentially get, like, um so in like a checkerboard pattern so like we have sulfur on the bottom and then Zozo's like up to the to the, like the right mm -hmm. so I want to get like up to the left of her five and fifteen because you said it's 20, 20. the yeah the you got enough speed the, the rafters is like above where the footprints are so I assume yep. that's like where you meant right yeah okay so I think yeah you I can get there and you won't provoke an there. attack of opportunity as long as you stay right next to him okay so I'm gonna start with there if you go over there, you will provoke an, provoke an attack of opportunity because you left his threat range. Oh, I move with you. Oh. How's it going? Yeah. Oh! Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so did you want to move there? Uh, oh, on, oh, on us. Okay, so I can't go, like, over to the space I marked without provoking the attack then? I don't see your mark. It doesn't show me your markers i mean you could so, get oh. you could get here yeah that's essentially where i wanted to yeah go. you could get there without i mean because you can freely move through friendly's range it just makes it cost double the like oh, so okay. every square is five feet it would cost 10. fair okay it's kind of like a, a difficult terrain but not so much okay so yeah you so can move there for free okay cool all right i just want to make sure uh I cannot. <laughs> this is gonna sound strange. Can I attack with someone riding on my back? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I should. When you're attacking, way. I might make Vasha roll like an animal handling check or something to see if she falls oh, off. Yeah. That yeah, actually. All right. But yeah, uh, go ahead and attack. I'll try to. I'll try to hit him. Nope. That one missed. And that one equally missed. Fired and I missed again. <laughs> All right, uh, Basha, you roll uh, animal handling. Oh yeah, you, woo, bucking bear, and you just totally ride it out. Okay, right, Zozo's turn. All right. Thank you. 
She's just gonna try and attack with her little. With her ukulele? <laughs> um, to use. To switch from. Because you're two handing a ukulele, to pull out your daggers is an action. So you wouldn't be able to stab yeah. with them this okay. turn. So... Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So you're gonna Let's... switch. Because the converse is true, too. If you ended up wanting to do a spell that required you to use your uke, you'd have to use an, a turn to switch back to your uh, instrument. Yeah. I think she's going to switch to daggers. Okay. Uh, so then that would be Sulfur's turn, then. All right. Um... I gotta do it one more time. I gotta try one more time. And inflict wounds? Yep. Go for it. I want that one. Why is it like. Oh, I'm at disadvantage. You're dead. Oh, that's right. Well, you still Unless hit the him. The other one was a crit. <laughs> that, was a cr that sucks. Okay, well, you touch his toe and you definitely hit him with your inflict wounds. How is... All right. Oh, my... Dang, yeah, dude. It's brutal. Necrotic nice. damage with a shit ton of damage. Okay. You're still on the ground. <laughs> yep. Um, I will pick myself back up now. Okay. Let's get rid of prone. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> wow. Can you imagine if that crit went off? Or I cast it at second level and got an extra d10. Oh my god. Yeah, that would have been a that would have been a lot of damage. That would have been 36 damage without the extra die. Just all of a sudden. Um, well, regardless, um, you see uh, the damage kind of uh, put him off kilter on, on his foot. He's a, he's a. How do I say this? He's, he's he's now starting to show uh, forms of wear, um, and so at that point he's gonna he gets a, a free attack uh, at the initiator. So he's gonna do an attack on the prone. How come I can't see my attacks anymore? There they go. It should be an advantage. You're remove the prone. Make sure to do with advantage then. Oh, that's right. I'll just roll it again because that one sucked and here's to be the second roll and doesn't matter he can't hit someone at his feet all right so you're you're unprone uh bash's turn yeah yep nice all right let's go time let's go time <laughs> ride the bear all right i am josh i saw that face you made because what i just said i just realized that <laughs> to attempt to jump up to the rafter. I'll say uh, you don't necessarily have to jump, but you're you're definitely s gonna be swinging. Okay, okay. So I can attack the rafter. Yep. Okay. So just roll attack first. For uh, the yes. Damage, see, or? see if you okay. uh, just do a. Actually hit it. Yeah, okay. hit. Because there, there's a bear that's bucking around. No. Okay. Yeah, you didn't. Okay. You didn't roll in chat, so it didn't count. Apparently, whatever you rolled. Okay. <laughs> Thought I rolled it in chat. Okay. Um. Yeah. You. You hit. Okay. Go, go ahead and roll advantage or uh, damage. Ooh. Why does that not sound right? Do you not add your? I was gonna say, did you not have your strength added in? Yeah. Nope. Unless her strength is ten. Her strength is ten. Oh. Okay. Um, but we're gonna say you you do more damage, obviously. 
Uh, did you roll that? You didn't roll that on him. No, I rolled it on... That's fine. I'll, I can add it. Uh, but it did oh. slightly more damage. Or not slightly. It did more damage because uh, you're obviously hitting some circuitry. Okay. Um, but is that your turn? Uh... Yes. All right. Uh, he's gonna attempt to repair himself once again. And that, and then, what does it do? He heals himself for... Uh, so he's at... Okay. Uh, you, you see uh, the, the sparks and stuff start to congeal again. And he kind of braces for a next attack and his armor starts to repair. Uh, over again. And it's bear time. It's bear time again. Okay. Uh, careful, don't fall off. <laughs> that probably did not hit. Uh, it's a miss. Fire and a mist. Fire and a mist. Another miss. <laughs> <laughs> Getting him out of the way, I guess. Eva has the right to bear arms. Exactly. <laughs> oh, nice. That should on top of things. Um, you get a little off balance, but uh, it's nothing too bad. You're, you're able to still manage to stay <laughs> afloat. Hit him next time. <laughs> riding. Uh, is it Zozo's turn now? I think so. Uh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. I don't know why it didn't work. Okay, just stab him with her dagger. Mm -hmm. uh, first, we drag the little the square over. The. To see the heads. Uh, the the one that says plus five. By your dagger. Nice. Yep, you hit him. Wait, how did you hit him? He should be at 22 AC. It like ignores it sometimes. Oh no, no, you hit him. Sorry, not 22. Ju Sulfur is the 22. Um, so 21. yeah, so now you can uh, drag the damage onto his face. Okay. Nice. Damage has been done. And yeah. Holy crap, this is a long ass fight. Um. <laughs> Where does my character sheet go? Why do I keep closing it? All right, we're gonna try this at level two. Nope. No, we're not. Nope. Not at all. Oh, no. Asha, it's your turn again. I'm muted. Okay. I'm going to try the same thing again. Uh, Go for it. Jump up and smash it with my mace. Why did that not roll on the chat? Yeah, you hit. I mean, it's just a rafter. You're just swinging yeah. wildly. You're just, oh. You know what? In hindsight, Sulphur should be up there with his mace just swinging like he did at the tree. Mm. Oh. All right. Um, all right. You made him cross his threshold again, and he gets a, a free attack. It's going to attack uh, the... 
Ooh, the bear. Okay, didn't want to accidentally attack the wrong person. Attacks the bear. Hits. Partially absorb. Oh, that's right. You you absorb things now. Um. Do I need to roll animal handling? Uh, no. Okay. Um, roll a strength check. Uh, Moira. Or, uh, Eva. Uh, I would be doing that from the bear character sheet, though, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, bear with me just a moment. Ah, bear with you. Bear with you. <laughs> uh, so there's actually no spot to draw. Oh, nope. Check, right? Under C, right? Yes. Oh, right. yeah. Check and save. That yes. makes sense. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, you definitely fall prone. Oh, boy. Okay, so now you uh, roll a dex save, uh, Vasha. To see if uh, you land prone or if you land on your feet. Dex save. Oh, yeah, you pass it. <laughs> uh, so you... Uh, Bear falls prone, and you kind of whoosh. Uh, actually, which way do you want to fall off, left or right? Um, I'll fall off to the the right. Or er, right there? No, the, the left, I guess. Right I here? was thinking if I was facing this way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you managed to land on your feet just fine. Um, it's your turn. Okay. Bear, why'd you fall over, bear? <laughs> Wait, didn't I just go, though? Oh, yeah, you did go. Sorry. Yeah. We, we forgot to pass turn. Yeah, because he got an extra attack. Yep. So now it's his turn. Um, He's going to attack bear. Hits. And they're already prone. Attacks bear again. And damage. Alright. Man, you're still tanking that damage like a boss. And uh, that is their turn. Bear's turn. Alright. He's gonna. I say he's gonna get it, but he's probably not gonna get it <laughs> by how my rolls have been going. So. <laughs> Do you wanna get up? You just roll that disadvantage. Oh no blocked it it's fine uh, uh, you can get up you... before you attack again yeah how do you is that like a just tell me save or yeah i'll just try to get up first okay uh okay uh let's go ahead and miss oh no no that hits oh okay uh because i forgot to Lower his armor again. When it was his turn. Uh, bonk. Oh, okay. Get whacked. You whack me, I whack back. You got whacked. Zozo's turn, unless you're not done. Yeah, that's good. Alright. More daggers at the robo ankles. <laughs> <laughs> This is supposed to be a difficult fight, but you guys are just tanking it like nobody's business. You hit. <laughs> Damage has been done. Oh, and last one. There we go. Silver's turn. We're just gonna try and smack him. At a level two spell slots, are you? Oh no, I got I got one left of oh. each. Um, you hit. A nice, nice damage, jeez. Um, but I will use a bonus action and cast healing word on myself. Nice. And yeah. 
And Bash's turn. All right, we're speeding up now. This is great. Okay. Um. Uh, I am. Going to get back on top of Eva. <laughs> okay. This is gonna be my stool this whole time. That's fine. <laughs> what am I but a footrest? It's fine. <laughs> Alright, roll um, uh roll animal handling to make sure you Okay. You can get up on it. Get up on it. Oh uh, no. Yeah, oh, you no. don't. You don't. <laughs> um Okay, well That's a that's a one. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's a skill check. So you're, it's not like you're critically missing or something. But um, you spend too much time trying to <laughs> get up on the bear that you were not able to successfully get up on the bear. <laughs> but uh, you can you definitely get to keep your action. Okay. We'll, we'll say um, you you used your bonus action trying to get up on the bear. Yeah. Uh, so I guess I'll just try to smack him. Go for it. Even though I can't really, it doesn't really do much. <laughs> Watch the 20. Oh my God, I called it. Oh, wow. Dude, it was like the freaking yeah. two in the Baldur's Gate. Yeah. All right. Psychic face. <laughs> uh, yeah, roll your damage. Some tasty damage. Um, I should double it, right? Roll another one. Just drag it on him. Oh, that's the wrong dice. Okay. Hold on. Oh, there you go. Okay. Sweet. Crit damage has been done. And I will end my turn. Sweet. All right. He's gonna do his annoying ass repair thing again. I hate that I keep making him do this, but. It's how it would work. Bad guys want to win. All right, AC goes up temporarily. Okay, that's like the first good roll he's done. Uh, my calculator. There it is. All right, it'll be Bear's turn. Bear time. I'll try it again. Oh! oh! It's time. <laughs> it's time. It's bear time. <laughs> Jeez, that was a fat load of damage. All that, all that life he just healed, you just took away again. <laughs> That's the plan. Oh, I thought that was a one. <laughs> I did for a second too. I don't think that one mill hit, but yeah, it missed. Yeah, that first one was good though. <laughs> yeah, that was a nasty hit. Those those turns. A second. Let's do it. Okay, slashy slash. Bring in the stabs. Stab, stab. Miss. Oh, no. Miss. <laughs> Sulfur. All right. We're gonna swing that mace again. Here's a hit. Damage is done. Vasha. Okay, I'm going to a try for a, another time <laughs> to get on top of Eva. All right, animal handling. <laughs> Yes, you man, you managed to wrangle up the bear. Okay, okay. All right, now I'm gonna swing at him. At the wires above or raptors above. Mm -hmm. No. Uh. Yeah, you you whiff. That's unfortunate. You just hit. You just hit the. The, the metal and wooden planks above, but you miss all the wires. <laughs> Dink! Damn it! That's not a wire. No. All right, I will 
paying out here. All right, he's gonna do the same annoying thing again. Next turn, bear's turn. <laughs> Nope. Uh, Not that let's one. See it, let's see if it tracks. Probably not. Not that one. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Zozo's turn. Your big old bear paws are missing more than the little halfling dagger stabs. <laughs> Just slashing them in the ankles. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh oh. Oh. I thought you. Yo! Your halfling luck! Just saved your butt. Oh. <laughs> you rolled a one and it made it a, not a one. Holy crap. Uh, you, you missed, but you didn't roll a critical miss. Yeah. Sulfur's turn. Halfling luck, bro. DM's Bane. Yeah, that's a miss. Hi. Bash's turn. Actually, you were on the bear, right? There you go. I am on the bear, yep. All right. Uh, animal handling, right? Oh, wait, did you do uh, that already? No, I haven't. Okay. I didn't do that in the past when I was Right. On so we make you do animal handling to get on her. We don't make you do it once you're riding. That's fine. Okay, so your right. attack. And I miss. Well, yep. I don't know. I, yeah, you I missed. Was at the rafter. Okay. Oh, you're at the rafter? Yeah, sure. Okay. I mean, I don't do a ton of damage anyway. Well, okay, that was decent. Okay. Damage is done. That's your turn? Yes. Okay, let's, um... He's gonna swing... The person... I'm gonna swing at the bear. Not the damage. Nope, not the damage. Swing at the bear! It's a hit. Ever so slightly. There's one attack. Next attack. And it's a miss. Almost a 20. Turns into a two. Bear's turn. Pretty close. Uh, not close enough. Yeah. Nice, Josh. Uh, miss. Wait. Nope, that's a hit. Oh, okay. Because I did not use his ability last turn so that's a hit beans damage is done chomp and whack oh <laughs> it's either a chomp or a whack never both nope never both <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> zozo okay bringing out the letter openers <laughs> Butter knives. Yeah. Oh. Nope. Ah. I dug me. I dug me. Sulfur's a go. It's a nose. Miss. Bash's turn. I'm gonna do the same thing. Oh, uh, roll animal handling since you didn't have to try to cr climb on her again. Never mind. Not doing the same thing. Uh, nah, you did fine. Okay. <laughs> well, we're saying, uh, Eva's kind of getting used to that. She's like, oh, I, I see what you're doing. I'll try not to attack so badly that you go flying. <laughs> <laughs> it helps that the bear is sentient, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. No! Oh no. Oh, yeah, that's unfortunate. Oh wait, 
you attacked him. Oh no, that's your animal handling. No, your anim no, no, that was your attack. I was yeah. attack on the you, you're, you keep dinking off the the metal rafters now. Dink. Uh, it's the no. problem with low level D and D. It's like, well, I waited I for five minutes to have a ten second turn. Um. All right, he's gonna swing at Rockman and miss. Swing at Rockman again. And miss. As it should be. Bear's turn. <laughs> should be. As all things should be. That's a hit. Ooh. Okay. That's a very small damage, but we'll take it. <laughs> oh, yeah, at this point, anything, right? And that's a hit. Hey! I'm Twice in a row. Let's do it. Damage done. Yeet. Dozo's turn! Mm. Oh no, wrong one. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. Ignore it. <laughs> oh. I miss. So first turn. Yep. Miss. Have you missed the last three or four? Dang. Yep. Bash's turn. Uh, animal handling. Nice. I'm glad you're on top of it. Yeah, you make it. Now, if you can just hit the wires, there you go. You hit him. Ooh, nice damage. Actually, I didn't roll it on the him. That's I can I okay added it. Okay. Um, you can see him vis visibly or visibly starting to like have. Him struggles uh uh holding power like he'll he'll go to move and then like he'll it seems like uh he loses power temporarily and he has to like catch his hands as he's moving uh, but he's still kicking ever so slightly hanging on to life he's gonna swing at the bear it's Does damage and yep, uh so that's gonna pop me out. Yep. And Vasha roll a dex save. Uh okay, so when she pops out of form, you essentially fall off and you land prone. Uh right next to Eva. And then he gets a secondary attack, and he's going to swing at you, actually, Vasha. Oh, he just rolled two 20s! Oh. Okay. That might hurt. Now he's actually pulling out the damage. Um, You saved your concentration check. You did just take a crap ton of damage. Uh, roll a strength save. And you do not... Well, I guess you're already prone. It didn't matter, did it? Um, but yeah, you failed that. And that's his turn. Eva, it's your turn. Okay. Uh... At the end of his life, he actually does something. <laughs> right. <laughs> I am going to... Uh, I should be close enough to be able to uh, cast Cure Wounds on Lasha, correct? Oh yeah, you're... It's a touch attack, okay, so... Cool. Uh, beans. I would like to do that because, oh my goodness, you need help. And that barely did anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, fine. <laughs> hold on a minute. Why does that feel really low? Uh, you, you're supposed to attack on your Wisdom modifier. Uh, uh, yeah, that was, that was your D8 Cure D8 Wounds, D8. right? Yeah. Hold on. You gotta add that. 1d8 plus Wisdom mod would be 1d8 plus, plus 3. Yeah. 
So I updated it in your sheet, um, so you healed her for oh, five? Cool. Yeah, that would be five. All right. Done. That's so bad. <laughs> Got like, yeah, okay, that should be good. Zozo's turn. Halfling stab, finish off. <laughs> Tiny stabs. It's a hit! Ah! Uh. Damage exceeds! Yeah! And with the stabs to the ankles, the giant behemoth of a, I don't know, automaton finally comes and comes uh, to a halt. And when I say that, it is 6.15. You guys want to just end it here and then we can come back to it next week? I would like to, if you yes. guys don't mind, because it's later <laughs> for me. Eat. Yeah, I was going to say, I haven't eaten yet. Um, so what we'll just say is, literally ends right as the finishing strike happens, and then we'll pick up next week from that. Oh, Sounds good. That fight took forever. Good. Thanks for uh, literally carrying me on your back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. My one job in all video games, it seems. You're driving me nuts. I was sitting there like, I, I don't want to keep repairing. This will just make it go on for 40 more minutes. Oh, but um, yeah, so that was our session zero. I thought this was going to be done on the one session. So next week, we'll probably wrap it up. And then depending on how that goes, we might do another session or two um, to get a full round out about the characters and how you guys are feeling. And then we'll be joining in with the full party. Um, but with that, um, I don't know. How do you guys feel? You guys good? You happy? You have fun? I am yeah. super hyped. Cool. I had a blast. You guys cracked me up. Um, but yeah, is there anything you guys want to say to each other, me, or the chat before we log off for the day? Use an axe, thought a mace. Yes. <laughs> Words to live by. Yeah, also <laughs> don't start forest fires. <laughs> the, I mean, I'm just going to have to start calling um, Vasha the Lorax. <laughs> I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. If I catch you littering, I'll break your fucking knees. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Love that. All right, you guys good? Yeah, yeah, um, thanks. That was a lot of fun. Cool. Super fun. I'm glad you guys are having fun. I'm glad you guys uh, have joined the team, and uh, I'm excited to play some more next week. Heck yeah. Sweet. All right, yeah. I'm going to say goodnight to chat and all that stuff, but uh, I will catch you guys next week. All right, Down. thank you. Bye, friends. All right, I have buttons that I remember how to push that apparently don't work. How come... My buttons are very brokenated. Hold on. Something happened. Oh, it's because my sources got broken. That's fine. Um, when I click this button, go to the this button. Did it work? Aha! Fixed it. Live and fixed it. All right, my friends. Um, that was our first or session zero for group two quarantine i do hope you guys had fun uh i had an absolute blast those are great lovely people be sure you guys go follow each and every one of them they are all lovely beans in and of themselves and they all do stream uh they stream a variety of different games amongst themselves but we're gonna be back at this again next sunday same time ish i appreciate you guys hanging out um maybe do i want to do we go for a raid because it is uh i should probably acknowledge some of the uh, peanut. Thank you so much for hanging out. I uh, appreciate you. And thank you for letting me know the weird sounds and stuff that were happening. Um, appreciate that. Um, it's nice to see people are taking care uh, Omni bear and all you friends that, uh, redeemed some points. I'm going to have to refund those considering, uh, none of those got activated, uh, during the game, uh, cereal. Thank you again so much for the 37 months. Let me give them doggy some treaties. Also, someone did a, a cookie time. There's a cookies for you. Um, let's see. 
but yeah um i had fun thank you guys so much for hanging out and being here i hope you guys had fun if you guys did uh remember to like subscribe comment Helps us helps us out a lot. Let's just know what you're liking, what you're not liking. I don't know if I should do the same outro <laughs> for quarantine or not. Um, but I love the characters so far too. Uh, I had a blast. This group of people works uh, very well together. Um, I'm excited to find out how the characters figure out what is going on uh, with this town. Oh, it's a good instrument for the gators. Um, but yeah, I will uh, probably catch you guys Sunday. You kept thinking South Park. Piggy Pack Bear, yes. See, we need to have artist people to draw some of this goofy stuff that's happened. Uh, what were you thinking, South Park? I don't watch South Park, so I don't know the reference. You're going to have to explain. Ah, buttons. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. Hi, Dougie. What are doing? Doing. Doing. It was their Minecraft episode. How do you get wood by punching trees? Oh. <laughs> yeah just swing the mace that makes sense right swing the mace although that's one of my favorite things about D D is uh you go have some cookies is all the goofy stories that you can get out of the, all this stuff but yeah i don't think i'm gonna go for a raid because no one i have uh followed right now is doing anything D D like plus i think we all need to you know take a second and go get some food in us because some of us i.e me hasn't eaten yet um, but yeah, I had an absolute blast. We'll see you guys Sunday, and I hope you guys are looking forward to more. And, uh, oh, also, friends, if you are here, we got to figure out why you couldn't hear my s sounds and music and stuff, because that's fun when you guys can hear things. But it didn't work this time. Very unfortunate. No, see you Sunday as in uh, next time playing Quarantine. Yeah, just for D&D. &D. Um, this week, um, we're going to be playing some more Hello Zero, and I'm keeping an eye open for Sekiro to go on sale. If it doesn't, I'm just going to have to buy it straight up. So, and then we'll start that afterwards. But thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Jade yeah, is being very needy. She thinks it's dinner time because she heard my outro, and it is not. You got like an hour and a half at least. Mwah. Love you. But thank you guys so much for being here. I'm glad you guys are having fun and hanging out and wanted to be a part of this endeavor. I'm loving all your characters. Um... I love the work that you guys are putting into them and I like experiencing the world and how they experience it as well. But uh, I'm Vasive. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us here at Quarantine. And uh, we'll catch you guys next time. See ya. Come on, let's go upstairs. I know. Let's go. Come on.